and NBA playoffs are in full swing. Baseball's back and going great, unless you're a Cubs fan. The NFL Draft just wrapped up, and pretty soon we'll be getting ready for the season in the fall. If you want to know more about these sports, the teams you care about, and the players you cheer on, be sure to check out Belly Up Sports at bellyupsports.com. You won't regret it. Baseball and whatever with your host, Justin McAwee. Because I was on campus and I had to appear like I was one of the cool kids, I would put the Star Wars book inside one of my textbooks so it looked like I was just studying for class. All right, look, there's only one return, okay? And it ain't of the king, it's of the Jedi. Vincent Francis Jankowitz IV. I'm a glorified fact checker. Last I checked, the most runs in a game wins. Actually, I am a fact checker. And Greg Probst. If you look at most Bond fans' movie rankings, they have Casino Royale and Majesties in their top two. For me, these actually rank in the bottom part of my list. I mean, I love them, but they don't compare to Diamonds Are Forever. Still stop getting Bond wrong! Hey everybody, this is episode 54 of Baseball and Whatever. Justin, that's me. I almost said Justin is here. I try not to talk Justin to the third person. Is right Justin there, is right there, ladies and gentlemen. I am, I am walking wounded. I'm waiting for a strep test to come back. So if you hear a loud chewing noise, it's because I've been chewing halls. I think I went through a pack of 80 in the last week. Actually, what's, no, your, uh, what's your flavor of choice for halls, Justin? Oh, that's Greg, by the way, if you guys don't know. Uh, Hi, everybody. Great I am, I am a like honey eucalyptus, the yellow kind. Okay, you're the yellow. I hate with a passion the cherry kind. Those are disgusting. That's just like regular candy. See, to me, that I, sure. I don't like cherry I, candy because of it tastes like yeah. cough medicine to me. Yeah. Because of halls. See, I go to the straight up menthol eucalyptus, the blue, the hard. Okay, stuff. that's good. That's like that's good. the only stuff that works for me. So that's that's usually my go to um, if I'm buying the halls. But they have like these fruit ones, and yeah, they've got all these like these different flavors, and it's just you, if you try one of them, it's just like candy. So I was really big on the Ricola ones for Ricola, Ricola ones. Yeah, for yeah, a while. yeah, those were yeah. But then yeah, after I, I would those. eat those or chew on those or suck on those or whatever you're supposed to do with them. Yeah, I, my teeth would hurt so much when I would brush my teeth. Then oh, really? I don't know if it was like too sugary or too, I, or I just well, I were those teeth. the ones that know. like really? Were those the ones that like really numbed your throat? Like, Maybe the ones that really I can't. What, what were those? I can't. There were there there's, there's one out yeah. there that. I mean, they did well. Maybe it's not the same because these tasted terrible. I can't remember the name, but yeah, they really. You know, Erica's a real big it. fan of. I think like Lucerne's, which those things are just disgusting. Oh, maybe I that's what I'm thinking those. of. I think that's the one I'm thinking of. So, so, but she was nice enough to buy me. She's she's got whatever I got. She's sick now too. Okay. Oh no! And we're hoping Maddie doesn't get it because. Uh, yeah. yeah. Matt, I, see, I thought Maddie was patient zero because she was sick all week with a cold. <laughs> And okay. we just assumed we had colds, and now yeah, our, it hurt. Now I couldn't some, talk on Monday. So. Now it has transformed into something else. Well, working in those schools, Justin, you know that strep ah. goes around right there. Yes, so. you got that right. I thought after 12 years I had built up enough immunity, but I guess not. Uh, I well, don't think you ever can. Where were we again? Um, <laughs> if you tuned in to listen to the the uh, dulcet tones of a tall glass of water named Vinny Jenkowitz, uh, he is on assignment right now. You are stuck with me and Greg. Um, but this week, we're going to talk baseball. We've got some good stuff on the Cubs and Sox, or lack thereof for the Cubs for that case. <laughs> um, we're going to check in on the NHL playoffs. We've got to check in on uh, Greg's teams, Calgary Flames, and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, boy. The uh, Lightning and uh, Maple Leafs are going to overtime right now. It's 3-3. If the Maple Leafs Ooh. win, they eliminate the Lightning. Mark my words, if the Lightning win tonight, the Leafs are done. They are not going to come back and win game seven. Because oh, dear. That's the Leafs jinx right there. Um, <laughs> and then um, I think it was actually Vinny who came up with this topic, but he did write in and tell us we were going to talk about our top five. What generation is this, Greg? Seventh generation. Seventh generation, which is your PS3, your Xbox 360, and your Nintendo Wii. Nintendo uh, great generation. Wii. Uh, so we are going to count down those. We had a bunch of people, if you're listening from the um, Game Informer, Facebook group, the I have watched the entire Super Blood over. Re- Hold on, let me try that again. I have watched the entire Overblood Super Replay. That was something they used to do on Game Informer. Great group of people. Um, thank you to all those people who wrote in to share their list as well. So we'll get to those. Time. But uh, before we do any of that, 
Uh, if you want to get a hold of us on the show, uh, feel free to write in. You can email us at baseballwhatever at gmail.com or baseballwhatever podcast at bellyupsports.com. You can also tweet us at baseball on what you can find us on YouTube, search baseball, and whatever. We are at 98 subscribers, two more, oh, and we can finally so say close. So we close. own youtube.com slash baseball and whatever. Um, you can find us at facebook.com slash baseball and whatever, Instagram at baseball and whatever. And the illustrious text slash voicemail line is 1-913-808-3278. That number again is 1-913-808-FART. So, nice job, Greg. I tried to stand in for the soundboard there. We do not have... Uh, Vinny is our soundboard engineer, yeah. so he we do not have the soundboard tonight. But uh, <laughs> that was perfect timing. I love it. Um, but like we always start off the show, we are on episode 54, so we're going to try and see who we can remember that wore the number 54 in Chicago sports. Greg, I have the list of all the players right here, so I'm going to default to you. All right. Who do you want to start with? What team? Uh, So I'm going to start with the obvious one. I'm going to go with uh, the Bears and Brian Erlacher. Yes, that is correct. The only one that I know and the only one that counts to be perfectly Um, I am pulling up uh, Brian Erlacher wore it from 2000 to 2012, and none of these other people... I don't recognize any of these people. Okay. So yep. um, there's a guy named Ron Cox that wore it for seven years. I do not remember him from 90 to 97. Mm, and don't remember Rick him. Car- yeah, that's it. Brian okay. Erlacher wore it the most. So uh, I'll give you that one for sure. <clears throat> uh, Bulls, I don't have. Eh, I, I feel like I'm missing a Chicago Bull that wore 54. Maybe. I'm yes, wrong. you are. I'm missing a one. big one. There's a big one. Part of the first uh, first couple of championships or for first three Pete, I would say. No, okay. His goggles. Ah, uh, was it oh, NBA my. jam with Scotty Pippen? <laughs> oh, you still don't goodness. know. Do you? I am. He was traded or think of he, the name. Left, he left uh, and went to the Orlando magic for a while. He played the bulls in the, in the playoffs again, when Jordan came back, I am, I am brain fart and I can't put that is the, the one, the only Horace Grant. Oh, uh, uh, and I, then well, there's there's a few other people here. I, was, I, I wasn't even they are. I wasn't even close. I wasn't even close. I don't even know where I, my head was at one on him. Well, oh, you know, he's God. somebody that he kind of gets lost in the shuffle. That first three Pete, I feel like yeah, a little bit. Uh, well, I don't know why he was good. I didn't appreciate him until when I got older and watched the last dance. He did a lot okay. more for that. Yeah. team than I thought so. I've got no Blackhawks either. Do you want to just, um, you want to get to them last because that's that's kind of your yeah. You know, we can do so. them last. There's uh, for actually the... oh actually I take that back. I looked it up. There was nobody worth uh, mentioning. There was three guys who oh, I've really never, I've never even heard of them. Oh so okay. See, I felt like I was, missing, be all, but... I was I thought I was missing another Blackhawk too because I'm like I'm missing a bull. I'm missing a Blackhawk. No, who are they? no, no. So I oh, can't believe it. I'm losing right. my touch here for the Cubs. I only have one, and that's uh, a Roldis Chapman. I can't. Think that of is correct. Roll this Chapman. Um, David Ardsma wore it in 2006. Oh, of course. Jeremy I, Gonzalez. I remember Jeremy Gonzalez. Jeremy Gonzalez. Yeah, I think I had David Ardsma for the white. No, he was 53 uh, for the white side. Neil Ramirez no, wore it for a few okay. years. Neil Ramirez. Not really him. worth mentioning. And yeah. that's that's about it. None of these other guys are really. Okay. Uh, Goose Gossage wore it one year. I didn't even know Goose Gossage was a cub. I'm not yeah, going to Well, jumping to the White Sox, then I had Goose Gossage. Goose Gossage again, yes. Oh, yep, Hall of Famer. Um, I had Chris Beck. Yes, Chris from 2015 Beck. to 2018. Yeah, relief pitcher showed some decent stuff, but never put it together. Ross Detweiler, yep. more recently, yep. he was always kind of like a spot starter for us. He came up big for us a few times, uh, kept his job for a little bit, and then Clayton Richard. That is Clayton correct. Richard, yep, for the that White Sox. So, um, uh, fifty. I feel like I'm missing another Irvin one. Irvin Santana wore it. Oh, Irvin Santana. Oh, yeah, that was. See, this we're kind of reliving the Irvin Santana, or we might be. With the Johnny Cueto return, so that's, oh yeah, that's kind of like that how that kind of signing went. You know, former All Star stud pitcher, another White Sox. You Comes know, to the White Sox res- trying to resurrect something that probably right. isn't there. So the only other one I recognize the name uh, Daniel Hudson, born in two thousand nine. Daniel Hudson, yeah, still and pitching. I think he's still pitching. He might be, yeah. And then he David Risky. D- I vaguely oh, remember David Risky. God, I remember that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that pretty much is all that needs to be said about oh, that. Oh man. Wow. That I never thought I'd hear that name again. So there you That's go. Incredible. So 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That does the it for 54s. your fifty fours. Fifty fours. This Next is getting we'll this is getting tougher as we go along. It is. Well, we're gonna have to figure out if we'll have to like have a ceremonious retirement of this segment when we get to ninety nine, <laughs> or start over and see if we just can't. We, we're not <laughs> gonna we, remember. If we remember who we did. Yeah, because I don't think we did around. it for yeah. like the first twenty five episodes. Actually, so. I don't think so. So we can. Yeah, we can do it. Can, to we like can loop around maybe. and then just go from there. Yeah, so that works. <laughs> um. All right. We do have one text to this. <laughs> week uh greg take it away who's our one text uh text from our guy pretzel vince thoughts on cubs and socks looks like it could be a long summer Mm -hmm. nhl playoffs are pretty exciting based on what i've seen so far i would agree with everything so especially uh, let me tell you about the cubs i know we'll get to them but i have lost you know you know me i follow both chicago teams Mm -hmm. root for the Sox, obviously but very interested what the cubs are doing except i haven't been because they're I, horrible. Yeah, I just they're just kind of, they're just so bleh they're garbage to me right now. The, go- the team is exciting. garbage. The ownership is garbage. The stupid marquee app is garbage. <laughs> um, hot garbage. Hot garbage. Yeah, they're well. They they well. We'll get to it. We'll get, we'll get to it. it. So and I'm, we'll talk. I'm we'll talk NHL playoffs. I'm I am loving NHL playoffs. When the NHL playoffs end, yes. I don't know what I'm going to watch. Yeah, it's the summer. slim picking. We can always watch the Sox, Justin. I could. I do like. NBC I do like Ford, Steve no Stone. Marquee bullshit. I do like Steve Stone and um, what's his name? Um, Jason, Jason Benetti. Benetti. I do there like. Was, on the bro- I think this was what a couple nights ago. Um, they they were just there was like a five minute segment during the game of them just eating loaded uh, tater tots. Oh, see now that was see it was hilarious. Just the banter back and forth. You didn't get that with Hawk Harold. No, you don't. So, no, and actually, it was an anniversary of uh, it Hawk was going down to check on Todd Frazier. Very important day. Very important. If day, you if so. you want to hear something very funny, uh, go on our Twitter account at Baseball and What. Um, I think I think I retweeted on there. Maybe I retweeted on my personal one. But Steve Stone recounts how Hawk just kind of left for twenty minutes to <laughs> go oh, check on him. He's like, I have no idea where he's going. I don't know what he's doing because he had to go check on him. But uh, yeah, so that is a a monumental day in White Sox history. But yeah, um, on on top of our one tweet, uh, I would agree with Vince. We I know the playoffs have been getting me going through this lull time in the Cubs um, schedule, season, history, all the above. Once the, once the Sox heat up, that should be a little bit more exciting, or at least I'm hoping to. Once the, I was going to uh, say, I'm glad you're optimistic they're going to heat up. Yes, I mean, yes, I would think so. I would we hope can, so. Well, I got a, I got a take later. I don't know. This, this, this right. might, this, we'll get to that. But fair enough. Um, and it's do, not a hot take. It's just a White Sox take. Okay. So. We do have one um, Facebook comment from our good guy Zach. Would you like yes, to read do. this one? Sure, Zach on Facebook. The Mariners aren't doing so great. They are not doing great, but there's still there's still hope. So I so he continues. So I am hoping they start doing better. Yes, I think they will. They got a slow start last year, so maybe that is just the way they are. They're 14 Looking, and 18 right now. I just 14. Shot. Okay. All right. Seven games so back. Salvage, salvageable. Julio Rodriguez is heating up, yes. I think. Good young player. Um, looking forward to hearing your top five video game list. Who are we ever? Uh, you guys are fun to listen to. Oh, thanks, thank you, Zach. Zach. Also, any input from your wives or family is usually hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep they they tell it as it is so we're uh we're we're pretty much three clowns uh most of the time so um yeah and we so married we, so we, well you and i married into the family Vinny was born yes, into did. it so he was born into we married into it so we joined in on this uh <laughs> fun on this on this uh on this fun exactly yes, yes. well <sighs> thank you zach Sh- Thank Share you, your, Zach. Tell uh, tell as many people as you can so we can in- increase our listenership. We're trying, but um, it's hard growing this thing. Is a lot it harder is. than we thought because of stupid day jobs too. They don't make I know. anything easier. I like to like dedicate a little more time. To I would our, too. Our would uh, too. Sh- episodes here, but no stupid ass job gets in the way. It's getting so in the way. I gotta, agree. Got to quit that shit. So yeah, be sure right in if you're on YouTube and you want to put a comment. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Greg. Do we have any hot takes? Ah, uh, we do. All right, let's uh, let's go to Greg's, Greg's hot, hot takes. takes. Are you you're listening and it's silent right now Come because I'm hell yeah. The music because we don't have the sound. All right, get we'll go with that. How long? Are we? Let's get. Nuts. I think that's good enough. Go ahead, okay. Greg. <laughs> All right, uh, a couple things. Um, so my kids have started soccer. 
Ooh. And uh, we um, we had a game today. My oldest, Andalyn, was playing. And I noticed something about her. She and I um, actually played, or we, when I played, and I see her play, it's like almost the exact same thing. We both play soccer like we don't give a shit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but. Either way, it is it is some of the cutest, uh, most fun thing ever to see him walk around. So she does enjoy it. Um, they are getting into it. It's fun to see him run around. She just gets a little, I think she starts to tune out a little bit towards the end. That yeah. hustle is pretty strong in the beginning, and she's she's strong at kicking the ball. But after a while, she's just like, all right, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, that's kind of how I was, you know? Yeah. I was thinking, like, why run around, kick this ball? Where there's a smaller one right here, I can pick it up and throw it as hard as I can. That sounds a lot yeah. better. That was me at her age, but Makes uh, sense. May, maybe she'll stick with this sport a little bit longer. I think I feel like I did. I did soccer in kindergarten. I was on the orange team. Uh, I don't think I ever <laughs> you scored and Jim a goal. Albert, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, we were. I don't think I ever actually kicked the ball. Yep. I remember my coach at the time, the very first practice, he's like, "I just learned you're not supposed to kick it with your toes." <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Um. My but youngest. Anytime, yeah, go ahead. No, go I was ahead. just going to say the only thing any anytime I think of soccer, I just think of that scene in Superbad where they're playing <laughs> soccer. And then I think Jonah Hill just takes it and punts it like as far as he can. And I can't remember the exact line. He's like, what the hell, man? And he's like, it's soccer. It's soccer. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> no offense to anyone who loves soccer. Uh, we I do enjoy watching the World Cup. That's that is a lot of fun. So one third of our podcast loves soccer. It's all soccer, yeah. Played soccer, yeah. And Pretzel Vince, big soccer. I was gonna guy, say this so. is blasphemy if they hear us. We're gonna have to right, cut well, this, this part this out. Is, this is our chance to blast soccer if we want to. So <laughs> <laughs> I had the, the, the fire games I've been to have been enjoyable. I got none against. I've them. never been to a fire game, actually. I've never been to one at Soldier Field. I've only been to it okay. at Toyota Park. Toyota Park that was yep. not too far from where I grew up. So Gotcha. Justin, you sent me a video. Uh, this is not the one you produced. You sent me the YouTube clip of a clip of Gotham Knights, and I yes. have not had a chance to watch the whole oh. thing yet. Can you give me a quick five second review on this where you're standing on this game? Uh, right now? I was let me of, let me just tell you, I, yeah. I remember when they released gameplay for this. I think this is even before I had the PlayStation five. This is when it was announced, what, a year ago or two mm-hmm. years ago or something, probably two years ago now. So it looked cool, and then I just didn't hear anything about it. Then all of a sudden, they come out with this. So uh, first thoughts on uh, Gotham Knight so far. Thumbs up. You give me the thumbs I, up. I, am, um, I, I saw Best Buy had it. You can pre-order it, and they'll give you a $10 gift card if you pre-order it. So I'm half okay, to not do that. Bad. Good start. Um, I was kind of keeping an eye on that in the, was it Suicide Squad or whatever game that Rocksteady's yeah. making? Yep, yep, yep. I'll be honest. I have no interest in Suicide Squad. None. It looks really good. Are the movies kind of killing that for you? Killed my my Mm. my vibe for it. Um, Okay. Okay. And I know I'm in the minority on some of that. A lot of people liked the second movie. I didn't. I liked that one even less than I liked the first one. Ooh. Um, But that I'm weird. I mean, I also like Snyder Cut. So what does that say about me? Um, (laughs) But I can have a Snyder Cut when we reviewed it. I gave it. it, I gave it some due. So yeah, you gave it its dues. Um, It looks really good. It reminds me of like the old Arkham games from PS3 and PS4. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the whole thing is Batman's dead, which is complete BS. You know he's going to show up. They're not. He's not going to. Of course, yeah. You know, Kevin um, Conroy coming back. But yeah, you, in the de- in the video, they showed the gameplay of playing as Nightwing, uh, Dick Grayson, and then playing yep. as Red Hood, who I can't remember the name. Jason of the Todd. That's the other original Robin, right? The third, second, third Robin. Second Robin. Okay. The only thing I will say is um, some of the traversal stuff for like Nightwing to get around. He's got like a glider he can use, which whatever. That's fine. I, I can yeah. believe that Jason Todd's traversal is they, and they actually reference it. They're like, well. He had to be revived, like using a Lazarus pit or something. So he can literally just like quadruple jump in the air. And like, you just see this like shockwave come when he jumps. That's kind of like, <laughs> okay. come on. You had to run they're around re- that. Reach, they're reaching a bit. But it looks, the gameplay looks really good. Um, the nice. fact that it's, you can play co-op through the entire game or play single player through the entire game. And I don't really know a lot, a whole lot about, about, about bleh, I'm trying to get I don't know a whole lot about the Court of Owls storyline. Right. But it sounds right. really cool. Um, I know they took that comic book anthology and turned it into a novel. So I've been meaning to pick that up and read it. Um, well, yeah, I'm all in. I will definitely be picking that up. Looks great. So hi, give get, it's like a 13 minute video. Give it a OK. A yeah, that's kind of like a standard single player gameplay uh, preview sort of thing. So, yeah, definitely want to check it out. And I I love that style of gameplay. If it's similar to the uh, previous Arkham games, 
which we may get to later. Um, Maybe. So, yeah, no, totally. I'm in. And there was just Batgirl, too. And, yes, then, um, uh, and then third Robin, Tim Drake. Is that? Yes. And Tim okay. Drake's method of getting around is he's the uh, he hacked into the Justice League's transport system so he can, like, teleport or something. Well, Again, have a, oh, okay. I thought he could weird, just, but I thought he could just cape it. No, it doesn't work. They all have grapple guns too, so I don't know why they just didn't give him that. Maybe they want mm. to try and make it a little bit different for everybody. I don't know. Maybe, but it Maybe. looks really good. I'm I'm very excited for that. Um, and the fact I'm that down. they dropped the uh, older generations, I know I feel like a snob saying this, but good because then they can focus on improving it, and making it a a better yeah. next gen game. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. absolutely. Last question for you. Did you yes. pick up Pokemon Legends Arceus? I did not. You did not. I did not. I saw you on Twitter. I saw you it was dancing down around 10 the bucks. sale right there. Um, I have too many games that I can't play right now. Backlog. Um, Elden Ring is 50, so I almost bought that, but I didn't. Oh, I thought you had that game. No, I, no I held off on no, that. No, no, but gotcha. um, I have been working my way through Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which is an absolute blast. I'm is it really big, okay? I've I do not of... like Borderlands at all. Um, yeah. But this setting is just kind of cool. The way things can change on the fly because it's like a D and D. Which I, somebody who never played D and D, it took me yeah. a second to understand how that works. But um, interesting. Really, really liked it. And then I still have that chorus game. I got to go back to and play. And then just a lot of Grand oh, Turismo yeah. uh, seven, six, how's, seven. A lot of Grand Turismo. How's that treating? Still. How's that treating you? Love I it. love it. Great. Yeah, it's, awesome. It's, just, it's it's a great game. Now awesome. that I'm an adult and I know how cars work. Um, as a kid, I would just keep putting all the turbos in the car when I could. Of course. And then when you don't <laughs> upgrade your tires and you're on stock tires and you can't yep. drive. Um, <laughs> I didn't understand that as a 16 year old because I was in a moron. But now it's like, oh, if I buy racing tires and ditch the stock ones, maybe yeah. I can actually stay on the road a little bit better. So I'm really enjoying Look it. at you, game. Mr. Mechanic over there. So. I know. <laughs> I know. Look at me. Oh my goodness. That's all I got. Um, all right. Well, actually, uh, this we can take a second here. Um, we would like to thank our new partner in the clutch uh for joining up with us here on baseball and whatever. In the clutch is an awesome sports apparel company that is known for their licensed MLB, Negro League, and MLS apparel, along with great shirts to rep your favorite retro hockey, baseball, and football teams. They actually have a Cincinnati Mighty Ducks shirt, which was a minor league team from a while back. Whoa, I might have to pick that up. But uh, even better, if you head to www.intheclutch.com now and at checkout, you can use the promo code baseball and what you get 10% off your order. Greg, we actually have an affiliate code. How cool is that? I can't believe it. Look at us. Look at us. So uh, we're a promo code for God's sake. I will admit I spent way too much time the other day uh, looking at um, the Chicago Cougars, which is a defunct. um, I think they were a WHA hockey team. There's a team called the Chicago Shamrocks, which I didn't even know existed. Yeah, the lacrosse. Lacrosse. Yeah. And then um, there was the Chicago... Amher Giants, I believe, which was the Negro League team for Chicago, mm. um, which was a really cool shirt. I almost, I, I might pick that one up. So, like I said, once again, that promo code is baseball and what all one word, and you get ten percent off your order. So head on over to intheclutch.com. We promise you, you will not be disappointed. So thank you to In the Clutch. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Greg. It's time for some baseball. Are you ready? Let's do it. Baseball. All right. Hit the Welcome baseball. back to Major League Baseball. Sort of taking a look this at Chicago's really two favorite teams playing. and other happenings around the MLB. Right <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> All right, good enough. Uh, Greg, tell us. I'll be honest. I've been um, uh, in in the infirmary the last week, so to speak. So tell me <laughs> what's happening with your White Sox. Well, I, last time I checked, uh, maybe you have the live score in front of you, but it was yes, six, I can. Pull it it was six four. Yankees are playing the uh, New York Yankees right now. And um, Dylan didn't have, I was looking at his I, seven, four now, seven, four now. I know he's mm-hmm. out of the game. He got a little, he got hit hard uh, today. Still struck out 11 batters in like four innings, four innings, like 11 that. K's and four innings. Correct. So strikeouts are always working for him, but I know Stanton took him deep twice in his two at bats. Um, DJ LeMay, who got a couple hits off of him. I think Rizzo might have gotten a hit off of him. So mm-hmm. still striking out people, but they were hitting him hard. Um, yesterday's game was canceled because the Guardians or whatever the yes, hell they're called. COVID outbreak. Uh, right? COVID outbreak. Yeah. So, so they say. I think they were just chicken shit. But uh, um, a game before, you know, nice win. And then um what was it monday um i think it was, was it monday yeah that was the 10 inning game 
where where the Guardians came back and just you know, oh yeah just absolutely destroyed the White Sox bullpen. We were making errors. We were just it was it was probably one of the probably the worst uh, White Sox lost I, I have ever seen. So um, yeah, can't. Um, hopefully that was just a one and done thing, and I never see shit like that again because I didn't lose my mind again because. That happens sometimes. I was waiting for a voicemail. We didn't get one from you. You know what? I was out. I was watching. The, I was actually watching the game while walking my dog late at night. I know I should have been like going to bed or something like that. I really couldn't ah. sleep that night. But yeah, I was watching. I had YouTube TV going while walking the dog. I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. So, uh, but like I said, that was a while ago. Um, just going to let that one go. They got a victory against, you know, Cleveland and then the other one postponed. So, I mean, we're still above 500 technically because we haven't lost the game yet. So <laughs> um, if we lose today, I think we'll be right at 500, 15 and 15. The Yankees the best team in baseball right now. So they're going to be a very, very tough opponent. Yeah, I don't. Um, oh yeah, I mean. This is this this is so. It has been hard to be a White Sox fan uh, this year, um, between the, the ups and downs, hot and cold. Uh, it has just been so wacky. I mean, this team sweeps Boston, which is fantastic. Well, Pes- Pe- we uh, Pesky and I were what predicted two uh, two games out of three for the White Sox to win. They sweep the Red Sox, which was fantastic. And then they just, you know, lose like that on Monday and they're losing again today. So I was like, I don't know. You never know what to expect. One day the starting pitching is great. The other time it's, uh, you know, struggling, hitting's on, hitting's off. So, yeah, I don't uh, I don't really know, you know, what to think going forward. It's so hard to predict. Yoan's back. He hasn't done much yet. It's only been two games. Um, we're looking at Lance Lynn, the return in, uh, for early June return. So I just need this pitching staff to really keep us afloat right now. And I need the bats to, you know, get hotter and, you know, stay consistent because like I said, it's so up and down back and forth. It's just maddening, you know, it's almost like they're unpredictable. So uh yeah that's that's what i'm seeing over here so but yeah, just for right now i want uh, i want w's so well i mean I they're, the they're yankees s- are gonna be tough yankees are gonna be tough i mean they're still technically sitting only a game and a half behind minnesota as of right now it's kind of crazy to think that their last 10 they're eight and two and they're still not even in first place yet because minnesota had such a hot start you know that's what i wanted that's the other thing i wanted to say too i you know me. I hate Minnesota. It's well documented. Test Minnesota. I hate to say it. You know, just at least watching them now. I mean, I think they might be sticking around here. I don't think they're. I don't think they're fucking around. I mean, yes, I still think the White Sox are the best team in the division. I still still think they will win the division. But at least so far, I know you know assholes are still saying it's early and everything, but. It ain't that early anymore. I mean, we're still we're in May right now, and the Twins are doing things really well. They're hitting the ball well. They they play really good defense. They save a lot of runs with the White Sox don't because their defense is still shit. So barring another collapse of epic proportion for the Twins, um, I think they I think they might be you know a little bit of a a pest for the uh, for the White Sox uh, for the for the remainder of the season. I hope not. I hope we can, you know, blow them away, shut their stupid asses down. But uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, as of right now, I, I can see this being, being a uh, challenge and the White Sox don't win this uh, division, Justin. Oh boy. I'm going to have um, there, there will be, there will be words and there will be slime, you know, oh, to, to I'm excited melt. for that. So I don't know what you would rather see. I obviously would want to see my team win the division and go deep into the playoffs, but I hate these division matchups where the White Sox just look like an absolute bag of dog shit. So yeah, it's not a good look. 
It's not uh, good luck I don't know. These, these, pes- these pesky ass twins, you know, got me got me thinking, got me overthinking a little too much. And overthinking doesn't do you well in baseball. No, so. they, you know, it angers up the blood a little bit. You know, it does. It does. It does. It does. It's not good. Well, for your sake, I hope they turn it around. Uh, let me double check. It is still currently, according to WhiteSox.com, it is seven to four in the bottom of the seventh right now. So do you know um, who's pitching for the White Sox, right? Or uh, no, the yes, for the uh, for the Yankees. Yeah, they're bad. Is... They're batting right now, but yeah, Loaiziga. Does that sound L O A I S I G A? I honestly have never heard of him. He's got a four point nine seven ERA, and Tim Anderson is zero for three at bat right now. Guy on first. <laughs> No outs. No outs. Okay. Let's All turn right, that into so. something, T.A. I know he's had a couple strikeouts tonight. So let's, he, I, uh, uh, I was kind of shocked to see that he has almost as many errors as he had the entire season last year. Yeah, he, yeah. He those, a rough uh, go. Yeah, getting through those errors. I mean, it was really bad a week ago. Then that loss, the bad loss I brought up Monday, he had a couple uh, key errors, two key errors, really. And, yeah, that, I don't, I don't. I think I mentioned before, I don't know what to call that. I don't know if you call that the yips or it's some kind of exposure, something something goofy in his head because the plays that he's missing on are routine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, that, and his defense was in question a couple years ago and it's never been perfect. I mean, he's not a gold glove or anything, but that's like, that's like booting it out there. Yeah. I thought he had kind of um, course corrected that stuff a couple of years ago, you know? Right. Right. So oh, I don't know. We got to get get just, if, if it's going to be like that, just get that shit out of the way right now, because I don't need dudes booting balls later in the season when it's you really got Lo- Leori to do that. You don't need Tim Anderson doing that. <sighs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Yohan made an air the other day, too. It's just like, oh, God, well, he's no just more airs back, you know, but uh, I just uh, the worst. I mean, I, I believe they are the worst defensive team in, team in baseball right now. So they that have could be to a be. problem. They that have could, to be. That could be a major problem. That is a major problem. That's major a major problem. problem. So. <laughs> so, all right. Well, before we get to something even more depressing than the White Sox errors in fielding, uh, we are going to take a quick break real quick, and we will be right back with our Cubs recap of the shit show that is the north side of Chicago in mm-hmm. Ridley Fields. So we'll be right back. All righty, we are back. Uh, thank you for waiting with us. Uh, we are now going to discuss the Cubs. Oh, can I boy. can I pause you really quick there? Yeah, what do you got? I mean, got? power of the podcast right here in our brief uh, break, uh, yes. as it was. We do have a tie baseball game right now. Look Yohan at that. Got a three-run jacked. I think T.A. walked. Um, so it is tie. Yankees, White Sox, 7-7 seven, seven <laughs> right now in the bottom or or going into the top of the eighth right now so you know you just you put out good vibes out there greg and good things happen you know i am hoping so i was just saying yo on come on let's get going here man and then you three run jack good stuff good stuff (laughs) all right um boy all right uh to go from something as exciting as a three run now to turn down the volume so (laughs) yes um all right where do we begin on the cubs um justin first of all i i really i'm sorry i'm not i do have i have nothing to contribute to the cubs segment because i that's okay i got plenty i I haven't had time for them so (laughs) this is this is all you (laughs) they they are they are painting me by making me watch them they're painting me because i'm going to talk about them now um all right so where do i begin they are three and seven in their last ten they have a 0.367 winning percentage. They are worse than the joke of a franchise that is the Pittsburgh Pirates. They are only three wins better and four games ahead than the Cincinnati Reds, who literally have eight wins all season. Oh, I, I, I could stop there, but I got more. Um, all right. The other thing is Frank Schwindel. The Frank Schwindel uh, experiment was finally set to end um, <laughs> this past week. They sent him down. He, uh, I guess, apparently still has options. I guess that makes sense. He's a 30 year old um, yeah. what, rookie, not rookie, one year sophomore mm-hmm. season, I guess. It's sophomore season. Yeah. Um, so they demoted him on Saturday. Then they had to recall him um, on Monday night. Because David David Robertson, um, our closer, was put on the injured list without designation, which typically means that means he has COVID or it was a close contact of COVID. So he's out for a while. 
And they also had to do that with Marcus Stroman, who is out now as well. Uh, which leads me into my next points. Greg, do you want to play a game called How Bad Is Their Injury? Sure. All right. <laughs> uh, Brennan Davis, uh, uh, prospect extraordinaire. I believe he is playing in Iowa. Does that sound correct? Uh, I will agree with you right All there. All right. Yes. That, that sounds good. <laughs> Greg, what do you think the status is of his injury? What do you? How long do you think he's going to be out for? What is his injury? It's actually not even listed. They don't. It's know. not even listed. Not even listed. So, um, six weeks. He is day to day with an oh. un, uh identified injury. Oh, so we'll okay. See. All right. All right. Day Are you to ready? Day? That's not we'll, bad. Okay. <laughs> day to day. All right. We'll get back onto the major league roster. Nico Horner. I'll give you his injury. You tell me how long you think he's going to be out for. Horner okay. was diagnosed with a right ankle sprain on Wednesday after x-rays came back negative. Oh, this was because uh, he literally was running and he bumped into the umpire and fell down. Really? Yes, he collided so, with the ump on the base paths. So to me, that says that should be day today. Ding, 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 we, you are correct. Oh, it is day today. Okay, mm-hmm. it's like, are we talking 10-day IL right here? No, he is day to day. Better. Okay, day to day, okay. Uh, Sean Newcomb, recently acquired pitcher from the Atlanta oh, Braves. Yeah. His injury is uh, MIA. It does not say he could be dead. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what, do you want to take so, a random guess on his status of when he will be returning? Well, since we have another MIA, um, am I going to I'm going to say day to day again? He is was put on the 15 day IL, which I'll be honest, I didn't even know we had a 15 day IL. I thought it was I only thought we 10 were day. 10 and uh, 60. Yes. No, okay, I thought that too. 15. So he's on he so he has an unknown injury on a fake 15, IL on list. a fake IL so listing. Yes, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, um, KIA now. So. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's not oh, DOA. Man. Uh, right. all right. <laughs> Uh, we have Ed Howard, shortstop. He is in. He is a highly touted Cubs prospect. Yes, uh, I will give you his injury. Howard will be placed on this injured list with a hip injury. How long do you think his injury will be? Uh, hip injury. I'll go four weeks. He is listed as day to day, but also oh. placed on the seven day minor league injured list, which the would seven mean day. seven day. I don't know why they have him down as day to day. Okay. All right. Uh, our guy who uh, the high highs and oh, low lows, right fielder <laughs> Seiya Suzuki. Uh, what do you think uh, his injury status is? Uh, what is Do we know what his injury? I didn't even know yes, my guy was he, hurt. He hurt his ankle. He hurt his ankle. He hurt his ankle. Okay. Uh, 10 day. No. I wanted to say 10 day, but I don't think they, I don't think they put him on the IL. No. Unless they he, called up. Because I know they called up Vargas, but that was did. For a different move. Okay. Yes, he is so actually. He, he's got to be day to day. He is day to day. He was actually put in the lineup on Monday or Tuesday as a DH, okay. and then was scratched, and then also batted as a pinch hitter later in the game, and then was immediately pulled for a pinch runner. So I don't know. He is day to day. Okay. Uh, oh boy. I. Oh man, this is not good. Uh, David uh, Alec Mills, um, former no hitter pitcher, hasn't made yes. back yet to the uh, majors yet. Um, right. He has a back and quadriceps issue. It's going to require more bullpen sessions before starting his major league rehab assignment or minor league rehab assignment. I'm yeah. sorry. What do you think his status is? Um. So he's probably on the ten day right now. That is correct. Good job. Okay. Greg. Uh, I wish I could say we're done, but we're still going strong here. Oh, uh, boy. Nikki three strikes. Uh, I refuse to call oh. Nikki two strikes. <laughs> Nikki three strikes uh, was placed on this injured list because of lower back tightness. How long do you think oh swing and a whiff uh, will be? <laughs> so I'm guessing he's on the 10. You are correct. Well, done. okay. All right. Because I would know um, if Nikki, well, Nikki three strikes was on the 60s. So I'm still kind of watching him. But Nikki, Nikki three strikes needs to be shown the door pretty soon. You <laughs> oh, you are. We're already giving I, I'm up turning on on these guys now. really we're quick. Our, this season. We're done with them. You go back to like episode 49. I'm like, hey, they won a series. This could be a decent <laughs> season, guys. Um, and Cody Hoyer is still a Hoya is still on the he's 60. Still, he's still he's still in the void. He's like he's in, still the in the void. We yeah. don't know where he's at. He hasn't quite um, made it to the Cubs yet or anything. So, all right. Well, I'll, I'll go. Good lord, there's a lot of people on this list. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll I'll finish this up. Um, David Robertson, Robertson, we know is out for an undetermined amount of time because of COVID, most likely. Mm-hmm. Michael Hermes, 
Hermosillo, Ir- another guy that I I kind of feel bad saying, but I think they just need to cut bait. He mm-hmm. has a quadriceps strain. Greg, what injured list is he on? Hermosillo? Yes. Uh, 10 day. You are correct. Ding, ding. Well done. Awesome. Um, And we know Stroman is out indefinitely. Who is playing for the Cubs? Jesus. <laughs> uh, I believe you are getting the call up next, so be prepared. Woo-hoo. Um, Can't wait. Yes, Alzale is still on the sixty day. Cody yes. Hoyer is oh, also yeah. on, is also on the sixty day, uh, and I can also tell you that Brad Week is on the sixty day. Ethan Roberts, that's is, weak. Yes, he, he, <laughs> <laughs> Ethan Roberts was the uh, young pitcher that made the team right. out of spring training. He's on the ten day with a shoulder issue. Bodie is expecting to come off the injured list uh, on oh June sixth. Oh my 6th. god, I forgot about. David Bodie. Honestly, at this point, David Bodie, I think I'd shoot myself in the foot and just go on the disabled list permanently <laughs> so I don't have to come back to this god awful team. And Drelton oh, Simmons okay. haven't even seen him yet. He haven't is in a rehab assignment nope. in tr- nope. uh, in Iowa. Okay, so he's he's on his way. He's back, on his I way. suppose. And uh Justin Steele's also day to day with uh thumb soreness. So there I'm- you go. Thank you for playing. Why the hell am I a Cubs fan still? Um <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's what the game was called. before. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, but yeah, the injury bug is officially hit. I it's, it's bad. It's really bad. It's hard to watch them. And like I said earlier, thankfully the NHL playoffs and I've been watching a little bit of the NBA playoffs too. Um, yeah, me thankfully too, those are going nice. on because when those two seasons end, um, I, I honestly, sure. I'm not a Sox fan, but I think I will be sure. watching more Sox Chicago games. white Sox. Thanks. You don't have to deal with that marquee bullshit. More either, entertaining. Justin. Yeah. Oh, God. Let me don't make me rant again about the marquee network. So that app, app is still at that. App oh, it's is garbage. Still it crashes on, yeah. at least three to four times a week. And I'm still a sucker because I'm like, oh, all right, it's going to work this time because I got to see the Cubs because, you know, yeah. I, I need to see the uh, Michael <laughs> Hermosillos and um, <laughs> who else? I don't know. Clint Frazier. Clint, he's still on yeah, the you team. know he's he's still out with his appendectomy, so he's oh that's too, right. So. Oh god. So there you go. I don't want to talk about the Cubs anymore because it makes me sad. Um, are you gonna get a are you gonna get a Jonathan VR jersey this no. year? Is that worth he no. was okay. booting balls left and right like Tim Anderson when the season started. So <laughs> oh god, these guys. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, you know this this Cubs team because I like to pay attention to the Cubs too. I like to see what they're doing. I have no. I mean, I can't watch them. Because I got rid of that Fubo TV shit, um, and you know what, you're doing yeah, yourself just, a favor I, by not having I, to watch. I don't them. know. I I mean, I love baseball. I don't really. Nah, I don't find them interesting anymore. No. Which is which is which sucks. This is a team that has their own goddamn no, it, channel. You know so. and it's it's not even they're not even interesting because they're playing. If they were playing all their prospects, that I would find that interesting. But they're not. They're playing a bunch of guys, journeyman guys that never made it. Yeah. And clearly don't have it. And that's who they're running out <laughs> on a it. on a you know third third largest market in the country. Um they need that's co- what our team is. They need Coach Riley there to tell them they're not even has been. There never was never was. It's not worth winning if you can't win big. Um exactly. All right, real quick before we get to uh I I guess for MLB, I can just run through the AL East. The Yankees have taken the division so far. They are at 22 and 8. Our poor Blue Jays of Jay Khan. Um, what's the opposite of the podcast bump? The podcast fall. They have gone three and seven <laughs> since they've been on our show. Ooh. Um sorry about that. The hated Minnesota Twins are in first at 18 and 14. The White Sox are a Don't game and like a half that. back. Do it like that. Astros are a half game up in the West on the Angels. Uh, we mentioned Zach's Mariners. They are seven games back. Athletics, seven and a half. And the Rangers, who tried to go out and spend as much money as they could this offseason, are in last at 12 and 17. And then let's get to the National League. Jack Lugo's Mets. Holy cow, Jack. I'm so happy for you. They are 22 and 11. They are kicking ass. They're hot. Um, in New York. And that's without DeGrom still. Yeah. So, geez. Without DeGrom, that's right. Uh, the ugh, the Brewers and Cardinals are 1 and 2 in the NL Central. The Brewers are 20 and 12. Cardinals at 17 and 14. And probably, I, I did not see this coming, the best division in baseball right now is probably arguably the NL West. The Dodgers are in first at 20 and 9. The Padres are 20 and 12. Game and a half back. The Giants, 19 and 12. Two games back. The Arizona Diamondbacks actually have a winning record, Greg. Holy That's not cow. supposed to happen. <laughs> what is going on here? 
And then the Rockies are also only five games back. They are 16 and 15. So Chris Bryant, oh, I'm West. assuming, is carrying holy that shit. team. <laughs> so I'm we'll just see. looking at it right now. I'm like, holy cow, they're all above uh, 500. So. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how long that lasts. Oh, so, my gosh. But, um, yeah, there you go. Um, I guess we can get into Vinny's hot or not. So here we and go. Now, folks. It's time for who's you? hot. So damn hot. I I remember how long oh, it's for. Because I'm a hot right, that's potato good. right now. Nah. And who's not? Who's not? <laughs> All right. Um, Greg, for the White Sox, for the week of May 5th to May 11th, per fan graphs, who is hot on the White Sox? Who is hot? Uh, I think he's got a streak going right now. Uh, Tim Anderson. He's ding, ding, ding. 500 by 50, 611 for a 1.5. One six one OPS, um, two stolen bases, yes, three RBIs, yes, two doubles, yes. Um, <clears throat> I would also like to give a shout out to Gavin Sheets, who did not get sent down when they called when uh, Yoan Moncada got reactivated. Um, it was Jake Berger instead. Uh, neither of those guys really kind of had solid cases to stay. But when you look at handedness, Gavin Sheets with the lefty power will seem like the guy to hang around. And he's found his power stroke a little bit, too. So, Good. but uh, yeah, T.A., I mean, our guy, he's he's almost like our next uh, you go, we go guy. Yep. Um, so, yeah, just absolute stud. So excellent. T.A., he might hold down that spot for a little while. But um, uh, yeah. Vinny also included, because these are all stats coming from Vinny, that. Anderson's batting average of balls in play is at 529 That's and has a weighted runs weighted created runs plus. created. Thank you. Yeah. Plus, uh, at 249. Holy cow, Tim Anderson. Uh, Greg, I have bad ball. news, though. Your yes. guy. Yeah. Who's my, not for that week. My, uh-oh. Well, didn't really want to talk about it. That's why my headphone jack fell out. Give me one second. No worries. While Greg's uh, finishing that, his oh, guy, I'm back. my Jose guy, Abreu, oh, my guy, boy. <laughs> what do you, you got to say? Did, oh, so you defend him at this my point guy. No? Oh, yeah. He's still my guy. 174, 167 on base. So it's lower than the batting average. So mm-hmm. hallelujah. Dude, <laughs> one sluggy. Oh, ooh, mercy. A 420. Uh, 428 OPS, three strikeouts, four RBIs. Okay, RBIs. His BABIPs at uh, buck 90 and a weighted runs created plus of 17. Seven freaking. Oh, at least it's not God. zero. I, I don't know what else, where else to go with that one. Um, it might as well be zero with that yeah, case. Yeah, no, low. my guy Jose. Uh, still love you, man. Just need you to just need you to pick it up a little bit, dude. Just need you to Please. pick it up a little bit. So. <laughs> Especially with Grandal, you know, doing what he's doing, it it would help the heart of I, heart of our lineup right now. Now that they've especially moved, uh, um, what you might call it, uh, Luis Robert in the cleanup spot, so we could really use that, you know, that on base and that you know that um hitting machine there in the in the three hole. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, another guy that's not hot right now for me. Well, it could really be anybody. But uh, I mentioned before is Grandal. I'm. I need to see, you know, I need to see him uh, do something. Power walks anything. Just <laughs> do just, do something. Uh, just please. start getting hot, please, for the love of God. And he's been DHing a lot. You see, Reese McGuire, a backup catcher, like in there every other day, if not every day. So gotta be doing something there, yeah. Because if you're not catching, you're DHing. So I mean, yeah, and that's not oh, no. not what oh. you're paying all that money turn for. It up. Right? I mean, turn it up. Yeah, highest paid free agent ever. So, uh, well, yeah, catcher, up. a catcher who is doing well in Chicago, that would be for the Cubs. Week of May fifth to May eleventh per fan graphs minimum plate appearances would be Wilson Contreras. He is batting five fifty. 654 on base, 950 slugging, a 1.604 on base plus slugging, two home runs, three RBIs, and three walks. Wow. Adding average of balls in play at 529 and a weighted runs created plus of 333. For the love of God, pay this man, do something. Why, what are we doing? Come on. <laughs> what are they doing with him? I'm Is this a showcase? They're going to get are they rid gonna of trade him? him? I think yep. they are. 
Wow. And why they have no catching prop. The Miguel Amaya, I think. Yeah, is, what are you getting from him? He, he's he's hurt. So he's, he's hurt not, right now. Yeah. yeah. Are you still you still have faith in this guy or in Contreras you, or Amaya? Yeah. Amaya? In Amaya, yeah. I don't have faith in anyone in the Cubs organization, <laughs> both players, executives, and just the hot dog vendors at this point. I don't, you know. <laughs> um and they're oh not, man they're not getting it done out there no so. they're probably putting ketchup on their hot dogs too oh um, yeah see that's 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 a crime crim- criminal criminal uh who's not unfortunately this guy was having an amazing april once he got uh the, after the first week or so but now he's come crashing down and that is patrick wisdom uh, adding 158 200 on base 158 slugging a 0.358 on base plus slugging eight k's zero walks a BAPIP of 273 and a weighted runs created plus of seven. Seven. Oh, Patty Wisdom. What's going on, dude? So not good. Um, let's another go to... another aging. Well, I mean, another, another freight guy out. they got yeah. there. So he still leads the, the team in home runs, though, doesn't he? Even though they all yes. came like in April. The, but... the sad thing is, is that the organization sold this bill of goods like, don't worry, we found these guys. No one else gave them a chance. And we know we got this. And it's like, no, you just don't want to put actual decent players out there because you're cheap asses. <laughs> it's like you major... knew this was going to happen. It's for, it's like Major League when he's watching Pedro Serrano hit yes. bombs off of Ed Harris. And he's like, how come no one else picked up on him? And then he throws the breaking ball and realizes he can't hit it. So <laughs> yes, that's why uh, no one else Tom Ricketts is slowly turning into Rachel. Um, what's the owner's name from Major League? Rachel. Oh, uh, Rachel Phelps. That's it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can just see him standing in the board meeting with, you know, Jed Hoyer. I want to get this guy. He's dead. <laughs> this guy Toss him off dead. the list then <laughs> uh mlb weekly Vinny writes in and tells us who's hot that is gene Shig- segura sorry uh 579 667 and a 1053 puts him at a 1.719 on base plus slugging three home runs six rbis and five walks uh and your former guy who i was really hot yeah. on i wanted the cubs to take a run at him he's come crashing down as well who's not this week in the mlb is marcus simeon mm. 100 batting average 100 on base 100 slugging a 200 on base plus slugging 6k's and one grounded into the hun- play. 100 hundreds in this case are bad so oh, that's very bad <laughs> yes um, their BAP if Segura is a 571, Simeon is a 143, and their WRC plus Segura is at a 361. Oh, this is bad. Marcus Simeon is at a minus or negative 49. Bad. That's yep. Bad. Him and those Rangers, man. Those Rangers stink right now, too. So yes, they do. Oh, uh, he'll turn he'll turn around though. I got well, hopefully he's got what six more years after this year on that deal. Mm-hmm. So We'll see how Texas is doing down the line. Then we'll keep you posted on we'll that keep you, for sure. We'll, so. we'll keep you going. So, all right. <laughs> uh, no NFL talk that's worth that's worthy. I mean, the schedule came out. They were trying to make a big deal about it, but I don't know why that's a big deal. And I, the way I looked at the Bears' schedule, I could see maybe like what five it, or six. It's only weeks. a it's only a big deal when uh, you know you know you're you know you're in contention or anything like that, or you have a chance to. We know. Yeah, I mean, we do we're not. Just, we're just expecting the L's in this case, so. But uh, we can talk about the NHL playoffs. So yes. let's play the Use NHL segment. Puck bags. Hey, shut up! You guys stink. This is so awkward. I thought we came here to play hockey. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I knew which forgot one was something. Do. This is the Diving one in on what's play. happening with oh, the Chicago right, Blackhawks. Right. In a while. <laughs> Great game. Okay. Um, all right. First I still off, haven't played. I still haven't played NHL 22. Oh, yet, Greg, Justin. you're killing I'm me, man. Getting there. I'm trying. You're a busy, man. man. You're a busy, busy man. man. Busy man. Busy um, man. All right. Well, first off, for those of you that care about my well-being, the Toronto Maple Leafs have lost in overtime. No. So the series is now tied at three. And mark my words. Did uh, it go into a shootout or did it? No, it's it's uh, sudden right, death overtime. Oh, sudden death overtime. It just gotcha. keeps going. You it keep you play going. as many overtimes as you have to. They gotcha. only made it to one overtime, but um, they gotcha. lost four to three. Um, I love oh. them. I will always love them, just like I always love the Cubs, even though I hate their hate them right now. Um, <laughs> but they are not winning. They're not making it out of the first. So this is this is it's you, over. you're predicting this series over. has is gone. Okay, it's done. Tampa it's done. is in control now. Tampa is in control. Um, okay. But if we want to recap some of the other series, um, let's see here right now. We have, whoop, oh, I just went way backwards on my mouse. Um, all right. Colorado 
swept the Predators, which is great because I can't stand Nashville. Or the- awesome. I'm happy about that. Um, that is the only series that is on, is ended. I thought all these series would be done by now, but they are going the distance. They're still going. Okay, so mm-hmm. the Preds are out though. They're Preds they're, are out, which is great to see. Good. Um, I right did now, watch game two. I forget when, when I was texting you of that game. I did yes, watch you did. Those games, yes, so. you did. That's right. Should be That's proud right. of me, Justin. I am proud of you. Thank um, you. game five, uh, Florida, um, won, so they lead the Washington Capitals by uh, three games to two. Calgary Flames lead the Dallas Stars three games to two. So there you go, Greg. Yes. They actually uh, play tomorrow. They could close that out. Um, the Hurricanes and Bruins are tied at three games apiece. Uh, the Wild and Blues. The Wild, I know Jake and I were really excited for. They are actually losing to the Blues four to nothing at the start of the third period right now. And St. Louis oh is up three games to two. So we could have another oh knockout. Oh Not boy. good. Because if Not uh, good. The, the goal was for the Wild to make a, a little bit of a run and let Mark Andre Fleury play, so the, the Hawks yeah. get another first round pick. That is not going to happen. Not going to happen. Great. Uh, my other, my other second favorite closet team, the LA Kings, are leading their series three games to two against the Oilers, which is kind of an upset right now. But the Oilers are up one to nothing in the second period. Uh, Penguins can put away the Rangers tomorrow. They're up three games mm-hmm. to two, still rolling with their backup backup, spicy pork and broccoli, Louis Deming. Yes. Yep. And um. That does it for the playoffs. So there you go. Need my flames. I got to tune in my flames tomorrow. Yeah. So got to be ready. That's they, do the, a nice, they do that. That stadium is, uh, they do some cool stuff over there. They, they do. So. It's like one of the oldest stadiums in the league still. Um, yeah. It actually flooded a couple of years ago. Like it Did was it really? they like, they're like 10 feet underwater. Yeah. Oh, geez. Below yeah. sea level. Um, what, um, what, uh, mm, what, you, what was I going to say? So they play tomorrow. You said, yes. Correct. And they can put away. They can put away Dallas, Dallas tomorrow. Game. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Nah, 830. 830. 830 tomorrow. Oh, yep. I'm in. I'm in. What a way to spend your Friday right That there. sea of red is pretty cool, right? When all the guys wear the red, all the people wear the red jerseys. Total, well, totally. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, cool. we talked about that with Jake yeah, too. With Jake, yeah. But I was just going to say, I know I mentioned it before, but like that energy with playoff hockey, some tough to match right there. That Great. Those stadiums are a rockin' for yes. sure. So it's a it lot of fun. Great. I'm enjoying it, especially with the ups and downs of the White Sox. You know, sometimes, sometimes you want to watch a sport just to enjoy it. Like mm-hmm. who knew? Like me watching baseball. Yes, I enjoy baseball. It's my favorite sport, but it's making me so tense and angry, especially when it's my team. When I'm watching hockey, I'm watching dudes out there. You know that I have no real affinity or affiliation right. with. Just enjoying the hell out of the game. So, and so I really get into my flames right here. So, but if they lose, I'm gonna probably gonna be pissed. So, Remind me, I'm gonna uh, buy you a flames hat. Now, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta buy into this a little bit more. I'm being, I'm being a shitty new fan, so I that's gotta, all right. It takes time. I gotta, I gotta yeah, the um, ride into this. I'll be honest. When the Hawks aren't in the playoffs, <clears throat> they are so much more enjoyable for me to watch because when the Hawks are in, like yeah. I live and die with like every uh, shit oh sure face off, and it's bad. It's really bad. So. Of course. Um, and same thing to, with the Maple Leafs and Kings to a certain extent, but not like I do with the Hawks. So, um, I hear you. I got no other sports talk. You got any other sports thoughts before we wrap up? That's all I got. All right, let's kick it to whatever. Let's do it. Now it's, it's time, time right for now. Whatever. 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 This is your whatever. gig. Take it away. Whatever. 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 Whatever where we are counting down our top five favorite seventh generation video games. I don't know why I'm doing this like an announcer right now. Like this is count I, I dig it or whatever. So I, you, well, thank this, you. Is, this is your intro into voiceover work. Right? This is my, I, I suppose so. So um, if you, if you're not, if you're not sure seventh generation is PlayStation three, just one of Justin's all time favorites, Xbox 360, one of my all time favorites and the Nintendo Wii. Someone's, you know, someone's favorite out there. I think it's Vinny's favorite. So I think he still got his. I mean, I still have mine. It's around here. Somewhere. I think we I somehow know. ended up with his Wii. Oh, did you really? I oh, think, I think Erica it, somehow got it when she had her apartment. Oh. And then well. she kind of co-opted it. And now we have it. But we don't have all the controllers for it. So oh. I only can play like Wii Sports and Mario. Maybe I don't. I think that's it. So. All right. Really quick. Wii Sports. This is a new one out yet. And have yes. you bought it? No, I was gonna Switch buy it, sports, and then I heard yeah. it was kind of shitty, so I did not buy really? it. Really? I see I've not read up on it. So they said that the games were decent, but unless you're having a bunch of people over, there is nothing exactly. to do just no, to no sit point. there and play yeah. by yourself. Yeah. No point. I did so that. that saved me $40 right there. 
for so, sure for sure yeah. yeah either way seventh generation video games we are going to be counting them down our top five this was difficult mm-hmm. there's a lot of games that are were on this list and we're going to get to several of yours uh that thank you for everyone for writing in uh we'll get to we'll hopefully get to all of your submissions um but this was a great uh generation of um of video gaming really it kind of brought us into the uh high definition yep uh, resolution a little bit so uh, i think you could call it a you know definitely a pioneer of some sort so uh definitely uh definitely a good golden age exciting time to be a video gamer and just that i know for us just at a key age uh for sure so where we could really appreciate it and everything and actually have time to play so um ps3 xbox 360 we those were the days shall we begin the countdown let's do it greg justin have you solidified your number five you know what i made a gut punch decision i don't know if it's the right one but i think i can that's okay we'll give you we'll give you a We'll I'm give good. You a couple I'm good. more minutes to think about <laughs> just in case we're going to kick off with Vinny right now. All right. So, Justin, will you please read our co host Vinny's number five? Yes. Vinny wrote in, uh, or wrote in, sent in, gave it, posted it on the doc that we have. I don't know what you want to call it. Vinny said his number five. This is a series I have never played a single one of these games, Greg. None of them. Not even one or two. Might have played right. like a demo of one at my cousin's house, maybe. Okay. All right. Uh, and that is Halo 3. Halo 3, the big, probably the biggest early release. I don't remember if it was launch. It wasn't launch with the Xbox 360, but it was very soon into it. And still, I don't know if the servers are still up, but yeah, one of the probably the one of the most highly touted games on the Xbox 360 and exclusive Halo 3 played a ton of this game. This is kind of what really got me into online gaming a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, solid story mode, very long, but yeah, the multiplayer it was definitely one of the the first, you know, like big ones. This is the one like everyone uh, gravitated towards, and you could always, you know, everyone everyone was talking about, it, everyone was playing with it. So um, I know I definitely played with my cousin a lot. Uh, I I wasn't great at this game, but uh, definitely played my fair share. But probably the Halo game I played the most, and more so like you, I haven't played all of them. Uh, I played well. I take that back. I played most of them, but not all the way through. So. Uh, but if, if you're talking about the 361, Halo 3 has got to be the biggest. So, yeah, I, I, I th- you know what? I think I did play maybe a little bit of Halo 1. Okay. Maybe, but I didn't have an Xbox. One, I didn't have the original Xbox console. Right. So I never, never played any never of that. Played. But yeah, that's a, okay. that's a good one. So, all right. Vinny, thank you for your Halo 3. Right. Thank you. We'll get to more of yours later. But yes. now, Justin, oh, you know what? No, you go, Justin. I want you sure. You. Yes, you go. All right. Please do. Have, hey, you brought if, visuals, ladies and gentlemen. If you're watching the video version. I have visuals. I brought all my cases over from the other side of the basement. Here Check we go. On YouTube with no cardboard sleeves on them, right? No, God, no. <laughs> it's a sin against God. Humanity. Well, you're lucky. None of these games have cardboard sleeves Whew. to win today, Justin, because they didn't come Dodged with them a then, bullet so. there. Um, all right. My number five. Um is uh arguably i think the best of this series the new one the one that came out for also for ps3 um and xbox 360 was good but i think it got it's been it's been re-released way too many times but that is this one elder scrolls 4 oh wow what'd you think it was I thought you were gonna. I thought you're gonna go like ration and clank on me no no like that okay i do like those i do like those uh, so yeah, so Oblivion, uh, a little backstory. Um, I remember I had my PS2, uh, summer of 2005, I think. Um, I saved up at a part-time job on campus and working at a learning center. Um, and I saw the video for this and I was like, holy cow, you can go anywhere on the map. You can do whatever you want. Like this to me was yep. like the next gen of gaming. Saved up, bought an Xbox 360, which would eventually red ring three times. And that's why I swore off Microsoft oh, from here yeah. on out. But um, <laughs> this is a game that I have been meaning to go back and replay. The reason I ended up picking this for my number five, because I have a stack of like nine, ten other games here, is yep. that this was the only other game. There's two games that I have that I actually got. Remember when the gamer score was a big deal? Yes. Yes, I this do. This was one of two games that I actually went and got all 1,000 gamer score points. Oh, you're serious. I did everything wow. there was to do in this game. Granted, I was a freshman in college, so I had yeah. time to play. But um, all the <laughs> guilds, all the quests, I did them all. 
Okay, so you got your, you points. definitely I got, got my money value out of that. Oh my! So that God. is why I picked it as number five. I, I definitely, it's one that I only played through once, but I, pl- I mean, I put. I'm afraid to look and see what how many hours were actually put into that. So, so that's my number five, Elder Surprise Scrolls Oblivion. Me, Love and it. I gotta say, Skyrim is the one that came out after. Yes, and that was the one that's gotten more alc- accolades. It's I okay. would think Skyrim's yeah. okay. It was a buggy mess on PS3, which is what I had it on. I beat yeah. it. I didn't get. Well, I didn't get all the trophies. Um, yeah. I bought the VR version for a while, and then it gave me a headache, so oh, I traded I forgot that about in. That. Yeah, VR but version. um, and they re-released that thing on like every freaking console. It's kind of ad nauseum at this point. So now I'm oh, not. Yeah, I'm Skyrim's pretty, okay, but Oblivion's where it's at for me. Isn't, I like. Isn't Oblivion there more. even like a PS5 upgrade? There's version a PS5 right now, upgrade. There's a. Really, I think there's a Switch port. There's uh, everything. Wow. So, uh, okay. so yeah, so that's my number five, Oblivion. There you go. Good call. All right. Moving to my number five now, All I right, suppose. You ready for this? I also brought my games too. We Justin, have visuals so as well. Here you yes. go. You got visuals. You ready for this one? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'll call it out, Justin. That is Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. Good I th- game, Greg. I Good think game. this has got to be probably the best Uncharted game yeah. for me. Mm. I have not finished four yet i would yeah i would go four is my favorite would go four okay so maybe this is where i'm at right now two for me is just unbelievable one of, first of all it's one of the best like written video games yes. everything i mean yes. the, if you're unfamiliar with the uncharted series i mean action adventure it's like a movie i mean hell they it's made like an movie. indiana jones like right. a modern yeah, indiana exactly, jones exactly exactly treasure hunting involved too i haven't seen the movie have you seen the no movie? neither did I. I had no interest in seeing it to be honest i didn't but... either it didn't really look that good no so um no but as far as the game goes, yes, give me the game every single time. I enjoyed the hell out of this game. I really liked the first one. I think this one took it to a whole new level. I think this was much more refined. It was longer, better story. Uh, the characters were more evolved. I think it was just uh, one of those games that's a huge step forward. I agree. Um, in, a, in a series. so uh, One, I thought was decent. Two was phenomenal. That The train sequence in the beginning when the train's falling yeah. off the cliff. Yeah, the, um, the convoy. I think it's a convoy that you're kind of jumping to the next co- p- uh, convoy truck. Yeah, that was excellent. Three. I hated three. I could not get into three. I thought the difficulty just it kicked my ass. Four. Yeah. I loved four is my all time favorite. And four is your favorite. Really okay. It's about Lost Legacy, which I did not play, but I've been meaning to check that out, too. I have that one sitting yeah. right over there. I've heard that's so. really good, too. Okay. So. There was also one for the Vita. Remember that one? Like I the beat that one. Miss? Yes, I that had that. One? I really liked it. Did I really you? liked okay. it. I think it was on PS Plus one one month or something. Or oh no, kidding! All right. Maybe or maybe I All bought right. it. I don't know. But yeah, that was that was actually really good. I liked <laughs> it. Was it. Good. I had yeah, that. Uncharted just great, great, great series. Yeah. Great series. Maybe, maybe you motivated me to finish four now. So I'm telling you, it's done. Four. Okay. The ending of four was really good. All right, and there were some really good Easter eggs too in there too. Okay. Good stuff. So, do we want to go to Vinny's fourth or Vinny's number four? I think we'll go to Vinny's number four. Let's do it. All right. Do you want to read it? Or you want I'll to read do this it? one. Right, Vinny's for number four is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Good choice. I love this game. Dev- another Call of Duty game that took a step forward from its predecessor, Call of Duty 4, uh, just Modern Warfare. Um, I think this is what really this is I want to say this is probably the multiplayer I played the most out of Call of Duty I want to okay. say um that I got the farthest in prestige in I'm I'm guessing um definitely played the hell uh, out of it and then I just love the fact that there was just kind of like this trilogy this is when you know Call of Duty campaigns were like really really engaging now they don't really give a shit with some of them. Yeah. But just a story with Captain Price Soap and all all those, all the uh task force 141 dudes, um, which they're trying to which they're trying to revive now, um, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, Modern Warfare, the next Modern Warfare 2 coming out soon if you haven't seen that. But yeah, yeah I mean, this is this is an all-time, this is an all-time classic, and like I said, kind of took a took a big leap from the from the first one and just refined it. And made it into just, I mean, something, something absolutely spectacular. So, um, I might get to that one later on a list. So Maybe. we'll see where it ends up. But yeah, uh, you played play Modern Warfare. I two. played a lot of two. I ended up trading that one in 
There's oh. another uh, game, Call of Duty, which I will mention in my honorable mentions when we get to that, that I played uh, even more than the Modern Warfare's. Yes. Um, and I, I've kind of, have you played a lot of that World War II one since you got it or no? Um, which is the one Vanguard. I, I have played yes. some of it. I really like it. Okay. I really like it. I haven't played much of it. It's okay. more of like a time thing, you know, yeah. the thing I keep saying. So yeah, you weren't, big, you. You, weren't big, you weren't big on that one. Uh, it was okay. It didn't okay. hook me like the other World War II one hooked me. I, I, I feel like I've, I go in waves. Some years I'm really into Call of Duty and I play it for hours and hours and hours, which isn't going to happen anymore now that I have a kid. Um, yeah. But that one just didn't, it <laughs> didn't hook me. Didn't hook me as much. See, so. the modern warfare ones have been have, have always been my thing. And mm. and the ones will I'm sure you'll bring up later. So yeah. the first yeah. the first one for sure. So yes. yes. Um, but yeah, no, modern warfare too. Good call. Thank you. Good call. Thank you. All right. My number four. I am I have a feeling one of these will end up on Greg's list. Okay. All right, let's see uh, what we got. I'm here. gonna go back to the original because I like the way it's set up a little bit more. It got a All little right. too big for me afterwards, and that is Batman Arkham ah, Asylum. I love it. I love nice. um I'm actually, glad you picked that one too. So you know, you go ahead. Okay, so I actually uh I played the demo when it was on PS3 when when there was demos to download. Um I think there was a demo and I remember enjoying it, but I never got around to buying it or playing it. And then eventually I saw it was on Amazon for like 20 bucks and I bought it and I'm like, holy cow, this is incredible. Um, But I played and beat Arkham City, played and beat Arkham Origins, which Arkham Origins gets a bad rap. That's a really good game. It is a a a really good game. And I think that's why I'm so excited for Gotham Knights. I think too, um, because it was, it, it didn't, it was it wasn't like the original voice cast. Yeah, either. It was a little just bit different. like a throw in. Yeah, but yeah. really solid game. Underrated. And, and Arkham Knight was really good. I enjoyed yes. that. I've been meaning to go back. That was another game that I tried. I literally did everything you could do in that game except the Riddler trophies. I'm I still working on the Riddler trophy. Don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. But um, the reason I liked Arkham Asylum so much more is Arkham City was good, but I didn't like how it branched out into the whole city. I liked how it was confined. The first game was confined to Arkham Asylum. 100%. That's why I liked you. that one so much yeah. more. Yeah. But um, the fact that all, you know, uh, Kevin Conroy came back to, to do the voice of Batman, Mark Hamill came back to do the voice yeah. of Joker and all these you know voices that we grew up listening to are now in this game as we're adults. Yeah. Um, excellent. Harley Quinn was awesome. Uh, Killer Croc was a really cool Killer character Croc, in that yep. game. Yep. Um, you know, being able to find the little secrets within um, Arkham Manor and Arkham yep. Asylum was just awesome. So that will forever be my favorite Arkham game um, just because it's more it's more contained. Um, yeah. Also, it did so much for the first time, too. Oh, yeah. No, for, you know, like a leadoff game, so to speak, it was it. Yeah, it just it just had so much. And I really it, it's so true because I love all the open world Arkham games, you know, like City Origins, Night. Love all those games. But there's just something I want to say unique about mm-hmm. um, Arkham uh, Arkham Asylum, where it's more. You get more of that horror element almost yep. because you are, you know, in confined spaces. It's you got more mystery, you know, you kind of you're kind of discovering things as you go along. The whole world isn't there for you to explore right from the start. You're just mm-hmm. kind of discovering stuff as it goes. So yep. um, I think I think it definitely had a you if you compare it to the other games in the series, it kind of has its own unique feel to it. So yeah. For sure. Uh, no, I'm with you right there. And probably probably the most replayability, if you ask me, if you can go it's the most it's the easiest to go back to, I would think. So yeah, I don't I don't replay like when I was a kid, I would you know, you'd get like one or two games for Christmas yeah. and one or one or two games for my birthday, and that would be pretty much all I played all year. Right. Um, I don't go back and replay a lot of games now, but that is one I've probably beaten three or four times. Yeah, um, and gone back and replayed just because it's so good. And for for me to do that now, um, says something you yeah know, so. no absolutely so there you go that's absolutely. my number four arkham asylum all right ready to move ready to move to my number four right let's here let's do Justin. it all right call her out oh i knew this was gonna be on your list far, <laughs> far cry three far cry three and now i know this this was the first um I got I got this game as a Christmas gift and I was unfamiliar with the series I knew I knew a Far Cry 2 and I knew vaguely of the ones before that, um, but I never played it. I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't expect like the open world first person shooter madness that this was, but 
you know, just and just starting this game and meeting Voss, who's the villain for the first time, played by uh, Michael Mondo. It's just it was just all really shocking and everything. And it, you know, well, you know me, I'm an open world sucker to begin yes. with. I didn't know the game was open world until I, you know, obviously started playing it. Um, like I said, it was a gift. So I just enjoyed the hell out of it. I enjoyed the map. I enjoyed you know, it's 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 a repetitive open world, but I really one part I really love we're taking out outposts and everything and the different ways to do that. I mean, it's, it it really is kind of like a a basic first person shooter um, on a tropical island, which you can mm-hmm. get a lot of in gaming. But I mean, the the story was great. It was really single player focus, which has always been my jam. So this game, this game really, it, it's it's. It's different when a game catches you by surprise when you kind of know what to expect or don't know what to expect, but it gives you something a lot more, um, you know, you're not underwhelmed by something. You're just, you know, you're, you're really, it's got so much value to it. So, mm-hmm. and that's what that game was to me. So that's why I had to put it on this list because, and it's probably still, it's probably still the highest rated Far Cry game. If it's not two, it's definitely three. Yeah. So, um, is uh is Michael Mando um is he pretty good on Better Call Saul? He is amazing. Okay, on that's Better Call that's Saul. another reason I need to go back and actually yes, start Better he, Call Saul. Better Call Saul, and I'm not caught up yet. I still got to watch the newest episode. That show is fucking phenomenal. It is that good, huh? so good. And Breaking Bad was so good. This show is also so good. So you definitely won't regret it. You can do it all on Netflix. And then yes. just a- AMC it from there, man. So, I'll have to. I have to do that because I yeah. loved Breaking Bad. Um, yes, which I finally got around to finishing right when Maddie was born. So, yep. All right, uh, let's jump back to our third uh, chair, uh, Vinny. Vinny tells us that his number three is Grand Theft Auto Five. Okay, Auto Five. Where do you stand at Grand Theft Auto Five? I really was really really excited they returned to. Los Santos and the San Andreas, San Andreas and vibe because San Andreas is, and I believe it's also Vinny's uh, favorite, favorite Grand Theft Auto game. I know you're a Vice City, Vice City guy. guy. Yeah, you haven't played San Andreas. No, I have it's not. So I know I, that that's that's a that's crime, so probably. Good. Yeah. The problem is for me with GTA Five, and I love GTA Five. It is a phenomenal it's a good game. pick. Yeah. It's most. It's probably. It's probably the most. You know, it's it's probably well, it's obviously the highest selling GTA, but probably regarded as one of the best. What it missed for me was attention to detail, which did which you didn't um which it almost felt like a step down. I mean, graphically beautiful. The map was the map design was great, the the story was amazing, cars, everything, yeah. guns, and it was all really well done. It was just missing the little tiny things that um uh it's a uh, predecessor had uh GTA uh, San Andreas, you know, oh, where you San, could go. Yeah. Well, even GTA four too. I mean, there were little things in GTA four. I won't get into all of them, but little things you could do. It was just, it was, those games were just had more detail in mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I loved the characters. I thought Trevor was just the craziest character and yes. one of the crazy. And I, and it was so weird to see him be in walking dead and he had a major <laughs> part in the walking dead. Um, He's also an episode of better call Saul too. Is he really? So yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, for me, like I really liked GTA five. I remember playing it. I remember beating it. I remember liking the heist missions and having to plan the different bank heists and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I remember that being pretty cool, but short of that, I don't really remember much about that game. Um, mm-hmm. I remember a lot more about GTA four. Yes. And I never, I never beat GTA four. I always got to the final mission where like, you got to chase somebody on a dirt bike or something. And I yeah. would always get mowed down. And I was like, you know what? Forget <laughs> this. I'm done. Um, but that game stuck with me a little bit more. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, GTA five is definitely a good game. And I'm yeah, excited, excited for six. I mean, I'll definitely pick it up whenever the hell it comes out, but even even five and four for that matter, I would rather go back and play GTA one, two, three, or Vice City. Sure. I don't know what that says about me. Um, but I do need to go back and play San Andreas. I've heard they've finally patched that that remaster. So maybe I'll have to pick <laughs> Is that it up. Finally at some point. time to pick that up. You were all we were all I was all in, ready I was ready to, buy to go that until it was a disaster. Because <laughs> I know I would so. love San Andreas with the music, the nineties music and nineties uh, vibe. Would love but that. um yeah. But yeah, yeah absolutely. So that's, well, there you go. Uh, There's 
Vinny yeah, Crawford. GTA 5, great game. You know what it is too, Justin? I think it was like when we're playing, when we think GTA, when you and I think GTA, we think, you know, long story mode, single player. Yes. This, that, and the other. With GTA 5, that was really online. Rockstar's opportunity to put full attention to online gameplay. Yeah. Which is fun, but was never really my thing. I honestly never know. tried it. Right. GTA for me is just what I mentioned before, just online story mode, this, that, and the other. And I think Rockstar kind of turned their attention to the cash cow that is their online gameplay. Yep. So, yeah. They're, I mean, they're still putting um, out content for that thing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's still, and, and I mean, it's still good. And more power to it. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's fantastic. They've been able to keep it going so long. So, well, I mean, even the fact that we're talking about a best PS3 and Xbox 360 list and yeah. GTA 5 came out, it was re released on four, re released right. on five. Yeah. And yep, totally. You know, so <laughs> so it's got longevity. That's for it sure. does. So. It does. It is a good game, though. It is, it is, it is a, good a good game, game, but it's just not. It's just missing that attention to detail for me. That's pretty. Like much I remember, like in is, four, so. like when they included the cell phone and you could call people. Yeah. yeah. And like they had the internet cafes where you could go and like there was different websites <laughs> right. to go to. Like that just blew my mind. Where five, I, know. I feel like was missing that little something. But yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Um, I think you're up, Justin. All right. Here we go. Uh, this one, Let another game I've replayed multiple times. Um, uh, finally went back and played the first game because it came out on a collection for PS4. First game was okay. Second game is great. Second game is amazing. Third game is pretty good. Okay. And then I know they, they made a new one a couple of years ago that absolutely bombed. Supposedly they're bringing it back. But that is... Hmm. Mass Effect 2. Oh, um, wow. Being okay. the sci-fi Star Wars nerd, this game is like Star Wars on speed <laughs> with, in terms of just all the different aliens, all the different groups that are vying for control of the galaxy. Um, and the story writing, the the, the dialogue is excellent. The, fa- the fact that you can kind of choose to build your character. You can be a real asshole or you can be like a saint and try and rescue every little innocent person. Yeah. Um, the other cool thing they have is this system called the, I believe it's called the Vanguard or Renegade system. Mm-hmm. So at certain points um, throughout the story in cutscenes, you'll see a little red symbol or a blue symbol pop up. And depending on if you want to be the Vanguard, meaning you're trying to help everyone, or you want to be a Renegade, which means you're just a complete asshole and you're out for yourself, <laughs> you can push the triggers. And based on what you push, your character will react in that way. Yeah. So like, for example, you might be trying to talk down a hostage situation. You know, some alien has taken another alien hostage or taken human hostage. And if you see the blue thing, you can hit the Vanguard and you can do some extra. If you have enough points put into the dialogue, you can try and like talk the person down and save their life, you know, save both their lives. And if you're the, a renegade, you can push the button and he'll literally just pull out his, you know, uh, blaster, blaster and just shoot yeah. the guy square between the eyes. And then the hostage <laughs> is like, you could have killed me. And he's like, you're welcome. And he walks away like there's all these little things that change the story. Right. Um, and really also, well done RPG. Oh, you my know? God. It is so yeah. good. I'm, I'm really excited to see what they do with bringing the series back. I know they they tried it with. Um, I can't remember what mass. It wasn't Mass Effect 4, but it was like a side story. Andromeda. Andromeda. Right? And that. Game yeah, that's the one that tanked. Hard. I have that game, but do you? it didn't do it. Didn't do I heard well. It was I horrible. Um, so, yeah, so I am excited it. for Mass Effect 4. <laughs> Great game. I've got another one I've replayed multiple times. I'm a softie though. I don't have it in me to play like the asshole. When I play these so types of games, be, I always try and be like the good guy, be the hero, <laughs> helping people out. Yeah, <laughs> that stupid the... conscience of mine, or Catholic guilt. It's one of the two. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That's my number three. Mass Effect Two, excellent game. Nice, good show. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of good twos here in the series. Yes, so. yes I agree. Okay, uh, moving on to my number three. This one. This, I mean this. I was just going to say it again. A lot of these were really tough to pick or whatever. So any one of my honorable mentions that I'll get to later could have made my top five. But go with this game right here because I played this game a shitload and I enjoyed the hell out of it. And I really didn't know what the hell was going on in the story, but I don't care. It is this game right here. Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Yes. All right. Pirate Assassin's Creed Edward Kenway taking over the Caribbean. Um I wasn't sure about when the whole idea of the naval warfare uh, came to Assassin's Creed three, wasn't sure about it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, this is, this is different, but you know, we'll see. And then when I found out, you know, they were making a whole game kind of centered around the whole naval warfare idea, I was like, 
ooh, I don't know about it, but it's Assassin's Creed. I love Assassin's Creed. They're going in this new direction. Gave it a try, a little shaky at first, and then once I got going, it got going. So, I mean, one of my... I mean, the amount of time I spent in this game was, you know, just, just so, so much time playing this. I mean, visiting different islands, locations. The map the map is still one of the bigger maps uh, if you put it to scale on a open world games today. So, I mean, a lot of it's open waters and everything, but just the amount of stuff you can do. I'm The character, the main guy, Edward Kenway, is very charismatic. He's mm-hmm. fun, well-written. I mean, he's, you know his his dialogues well written as far as the story goes i couldn't i i'm drawing a blank on most of it because it was just a lot of weird stuff happening but the fact that you know that you know it doesn't really what i'm saying is it doesn't really matter because you still enjoy the game it's the game with with that yeah, yeah you you do the missions to progress and the gameplay more than saves the game away from a story that I can't even remember. So a uh, huge fan of the series, obviously. I think I have all the Assassin's Creed games. Um, it's hard to pick. It's and like I said, it's hard to pick a favorite, but I'm going with this one because of the amount of uh, the amount of time I've spent playing it and the amount of enjoyment I got out of it. So good, good, nice. Uh, that is one I think I bought on sale for like five bucks on PSN. Did, and did I got really? I got probably like seven, eight hours in. And then once I had to start doing more of the naval battle stuff, that's when I bounced because yeah. I just had no interest in that. But yeah. the gameplay was good. I loved um, not PS3, but Origins was the only other Assassin's Creed I played. Yes. And I loved Origins. Yes. So yeah, that was on PS4. I keep meaning yep. to think about checking out Odyssey or what's the Viking uh, one? Valhalla. Valhalla. Yeah. Really good. Really good game, especially on oh. that PS. It looks it, it plays beautifully on that PS5, Justin. So that might be one that I gotta check out eventually. You can we'll you see. can probably that that you'll probably get the standard edition discounted very, very soon. So well, I know like Odyssey is always like tw- 12 bucks on PSN. Yeah. So I never that might I never, be worth it. And I never but yeah, pulled. once you, you might be able to get Valhalla for 20 or 14.99 coming up real soon. Oh, standard yeah. edition. So for sure. Yeah, if you see that, I highly recommend it. So sweet. All right. Uh, Vinny, you want to take Vinny's number two? Vinny's number two is a good one. Red Dead Redemption one, of course. Um, John Marston, the old West, or just before, just the late 1800s. Yep, in the desert. Um, just as things are starting to come around. Um, this was this is another rock star game, open world. And one that just kind of took the world by storm, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I can speak for me personally. I first saw this game advertised on the side of a pace bus. That's kind of like one of the local bus wow. services. Yeah, here, the, old, yeah. the old 421 by Old Orchard. They had a Best Buy over there. And I was into video games and everything. But, you know, you didn't have the same kind of, you know, I mean, we were relying on, you know, magazines and this, that and the other uh, to get our latest news, there's not really like Twitter or anything where it was at. So right. I wasn't really up on this game until I saw what sold me on is I was it was it was made by Rockstar. So I was like, OK, well, they make Grand Theft Auto or they produce Grand Theft Auto. So this has got to be something like that, kind of like Grand Theft Auto in the old West. Well, it certainly was that and it was turned up, you know, another level or something, because this game is and was awesome this is a game i'm ready for a remaster for you know really for a ps5 remaster oh yeah i it's like i want to get back and play this game all over again so i really like the second one i don't think it had the same punch as the first one though the first one is phenomenal see now so. that's interesting because after playing the second one Yes. I've kind of like completely forgot about the first one because I loved the second one so much more. Oh, yeah. For, like, okay. the, like, um, oh, God, what's the name of the character in the second one? Arthur. Oh, Arthur Morgan. Arthur Morgan. I like yeah. his character and his arc so much more than John Marston. For okay. Some reason. All right. But um, yeah, Red Dead, Re- Red Dead Redemption is really good. I did buy the, was it Undead Nightmare? I played yeah. that for a little while too. Yeah. That's I enjoyed great- that too. Yeah. That, that was great. Red Dead Redemption, though, was really good. Highly recommended if you haven't played it already. The thing that I absolutely loved is this poor guy. He's trying to make a better life. He gets out of this this Wild West gang. Yeah. And then he gets caught up in the government making him do like his their bidding. Right. Yeah, like the, pretty. And much. then the best part is they and, you know, spoiler alert for a game that came out, what, 15 years ago now? Um, <laughs> oh God, has it been that long? 
I think it is seven or eight, something like that. Pretty pretty Um, much has. You know, they get the government gets what they want from him. He takes out this all of his old gang members, and then they just come and they kill him after he started a new life for his family. And then you think that's the end of the game, and you restart it, and you're playing as his son. Yes. And you can go track down the guy that that killed you. Yep. He's fishing on the side of the road. The pink you can walk yep. up, and I can't remember if you can talk to him or you can just blow him away. And then, yeah. and then that's the title card. The game's over, and you can right. still go do what you want. But right. that blew my mind. I was like, "Wow, that is so yeah. interesting." So, yeah, no, for sure. Ah, uh, great game. For sure. Yeah, Red, Red, Red. I I don't want to knock Red Dead Redemption to you because it was one no. Of the, it's definitely got it its probably, faults, right? It, well, even I don't even want to say faults, you know, because it definitely Red Dead Redemption Two is also one of my favorite games, mm-hmm. and I really I agree with you about Arthur Morgan. I think what they did there. I mean, it's a prequel that was done extremely, extremely arguably well, maybe one so. of the best prequels in like media. I would say Pro- the way probably. they tied everything yeah. together. The, the fact that they took a character who, when I first heard that, I'm like, they never freaking mentioned this guy in the entire yeah. first game. Yeah. And now you're expecting me that he's going to have an impact. Right. And then when they weave his story and you figure out why. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's, like, it's so good. It's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But, I mean, any anything, let's just say anything Red Dead Redemption, I am I am here for. So, did you ever, yeah, play, that, did you ever play Red Dead Revolver? No, <laughs> neither did I. And that's that's <laughs> that was a, about Red, that was, was the that first a, one. That was that a Capcom game. That was that wasn't even a Rockstar game. Rockstar bought the rights to the name. That's and right. And they just kind of they, they just kind of did their, their own, own thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Red Dead so. Revolve. I feel like there was some sort of Easter egg with that character. I think the there game. was. I don't I forget what, what it was, was though. though. So, um, yeah, I can't remember. I don't think there was Dutch or anything like that in that game. Or maybe no, I was, don't think so. Red Dead Revolver. I remember always seeing that. I gotta go check that out. Yeah, I gotta check that out now. I'm gonna find Red Dead Revolver on eBay or something. So there you go. (laughs) All right. Oh, good stuff. Good call, Vinny. Well done. All right, Justin. Number two for you. All right. I have been singing the praises of this game for so long. It makes me so sad that the company that made it is no longer with us. Uh, Uh, And and it also bums me out because they also made the SOCOM series, which is what got me into online multiplayer. Yep. I, I'm not even going to get into all the stuff we did with Sokom because <laughs> oof, you're um, you're you're one of many, Justin. Yes. You're one of many. And that is for PS3 mag or massive, massive action, action game. game. Um, the fact that it was 126 <laughs> one versus 126, one, yep. and it worked well and it yep. made sense. Um, it was really cool because when you start the game, you have to pick one of three factions, which was kind of a big deal because you have, I never experienced that where. If you don't play if you don't pick the same faction as your friend guess what you're not playing with that's them. it you did it's your one that's choice it. unless you make you a new username and unless start you make over. it you're right yeah you there's no turning back um but the maps were so large and i was worried because there's only there's four different game modes with different differing varying levels of players but the 256 one the one 126 the one, versus yeah. 126 was the big one um and that map was so big you could play it dozens of times and be in different locations and you never realized it was the yeah. same map short of seeing yeah. it on the screen it when was you just entered one it. map yeah um and then there was other smaller modes that had different maps and stuff and it actually had two dlc packs and i never buy dlc i bought both dlcs for yep. this game like it was phenomenal um oh i had so much fun playing that game and i didn't even play that game with anyone i played that by myself like, right didn't have right. a, a clan or a, a team or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, we always called it clans on SOCOM, but um, right. Well, they're, yeah. I think they're still. Clans, I think that's still what they uh, call like in yeah. Call of Duty a clan or whatever. But um, yeah, like I didn't meet up with anybody online. Didn't go to message boards to find people. Like I just played by myself, and I loved every minute of that game yeah. because they did a lot of the stuff that the new battlefields do wrong. You could be a medic or an engineer. Yes, you could Porsche re- repair shit, revive people, and you could still be like player of the game even if you sucked at shooting, yep. which I was okay. But yeah. um, such a good game. I would kill to have them re- bring, bring that back. I know that's never going to happen because I don't and, know how well it did for Sony, but um, great game. Well, no, no game has been able to match it either. Like you no, mentioned, Battlefield, Battlefield still can't ba- get it right. You, you, you exactly. Let's say, let's stick with Battlefield right here. I mean, they're they're trying to push the scale of their multiplayer only games. It's not even close to no. what what Mag was. The, yeah. dom- the, what was it? Domination mode or. Domination was, was I think their big one, yeah. It was their big one, yeah. The yeah. two fifty six total, the one two eight and B one two eight. One two eight, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, even and you had to 
like there were people there. I mean, there were like lieutenants. Yeah, you could be assigned lieutenants too. If you were not, you know, they'd be watching. Playing. You, you could get booted from you, the yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, it so. was great because they instead of saying like, "All right, we're gonna have 128 people all trying to talk on the mic at once," yeah. you were assigned a squad of like eight people, right. and then you had a squad leader who then could take their mic and talk to like the company leader, and then the company yeah. leader could talk to like the regiment leader. Right. And you could call in like airstrikes and things like that yep. and, and vehicle drops. And it was just so, like I had never played any, like I didn't grow up with a PC that could play Battlefield. So I didn't grow up with any of that. So right. this was like revolutionary to me. And yeah, I would yep. kill for for them. Well, to even, bring that yeah, even Battlefield hasn't gotten to that level either right now. That no, they've taken of, stuff away. Right. Handing down objectives or strat. Yeah. I mean, this isn't this isn't like Call of Duty either where you're um, running and gunning and shooting people. And that, you know, it's kind of sad because that's probably why the game failed. Yeah, it's because you couldn't go on, you know, on your own and just quick scope a bunch of people. It wasn't designed to be played like that. So, right. Right. Which is what people didn't want, I guess. But it was it was really one of a kind. And, you know, it's it is sorely missed by many till this day still. Yeah, so do you remember game. what you remember what uh, group you were? And it just I was but, uh, Sever. I was the uh, the SDR. Sever. Yeah, I liked yeah. them because their guys had like um converse on because they were yeah. like the rebel the rebel <laughs> the rebel yeah. group. so that's why yeah, i picked them and i think exactly. they had hockey masks too so i always picked yep. them so what yep. did you play that a lot i play i did play it uh quite Do you remember often, what, so. what group you were yeah i was the same were you were oh, really yeah, i was ever yep awesome. we, i played it with a couple of guys i worked with so that's awesome we still desperately miss that game and so uh, good can't can't uh be matched uh you know no. to anything else really not so. at all oh uh, r.i.p mag so (laughs) (laughs) all right getting down to the wire here my number two and we kind of briefly mentioned this before but here it is oh grand theft auto 4 that is not what i was gonna say okay auto 4 this game for me number one i remember when the box art trailer came out and that was why that when they you know kind of hand drew the cover and everything and you know sped up time so that was my moment where I'm like, all right, it's happening. You know, it's coming. I've been waiting, been waiting a while. So I um, got this game on the 360. I remember I was going to, I was in college and I sold back my books to buy this game. <laughs> so I don't even know if the semester was over yet or whatever, but I, either way, I sold them off yeah. and, you know, picked up the game from the Best Buy at Village Crossing in Skokie. And, popped it on and it was just like gta is is back mm-hmm. or back when liberty city even though there wasn't really you know like flying or anything no took that away but yeah you were in you were in you know you were in liberty city so it was kind of hard to do anyway but yeah it was um it was phenomenal i mean it looked great on the 360 like i said playing in high definition again a arguably one of the best written stories it's a really the, well written uh, franchise story. i mean yeah. um with nico and everything and uh his adventures and just the cars the even even like the graphical lighting the layouts what you could mm-hmm. do you mentioned before the internet cafes and all that what you could what missing too is that you could actually turn off your car and park it without yeah. actually having to get out to yeah. So, I mean, you know, going on dates, hanging out with friends, building relationships. I mean, it was really immersive and, you know, it was, uh, it just, it just had a lot of things that you found missing in GTA five, I think. So, yeah, the, um, the characters were so memorable too. Like, like yeah. Nico, Nico, obviously the story, like the whole story of like, I remember when they said the, so the story, I'm like, oh, that's going to be interesting. I wonder how people react to that. But you're this yeah. Eastern European immigrant who's coming here to get away from like the horrible you know, war torn life yeah. he had. And then he gets here and he's completely immediately <laughs> grabbed into like this just right. horrible, corrupt, toxic <laughs> city and doing all these jobs for criminals. And, right. and then, you know, yeah, right. his, his cousin, is it oh, Roman was it Roman and Brucey was Brucey the, like, the, is for the, the friend. friend. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good game. Yeah, no, definitely one of my favorites and one that I another one I kind of wish they would, you know, we were knocking on these remasters, yeah. but this is one I kind of want to play again. Yeah, there's potential the truth, there for so, that one. I, yeah. I that's another one I need to really I have not played that since it yeah. came out and I, you know, almost beat it. I was probably 5 minutes away from the ending, yeah, but it was uh, it was just so solid. I mean, even the sound of it was great too. Like it just had a different sound to it that was unique. That was still missing in 5. And so. I liked too like there were choices where like um 
was it one like you had two two characters and you you had to kill yeah, one of them yeah and, like so that was gonna like, end that storyline right. you didn't have a choice right so there was like packy and then the like the fbi agent and then there was yep. playboy playboy x, x and Dwayne. i think Dwayne, it was. yeah yeah so um yeah just you know kind of gave you kind of gave you the option of what to do so yeah. uh it was a little more and then it had two dlcs too it had yes and those uh, were both really Boston good dan really good and then the ballad of uh gay tony, gay tony yeah gay tony yeah that was also really that was pretty really good and that's good. what bummed me out about five is that they just stuck with the online multiplayer they didn't do any yeah you know? yeah they didn't have like a separate storyline or anything and it's really kind of like a wasted well, i know for online you know i'm sure it's fine but as far as you still had a really good map for single player too mm-hmm. so yeah you're absolutely right there was no uh dlc for single player only no. yeah that that no. is disappointing now so uh oh well all right <laughs> number gta4 good, good stuff. pick that's a good one that's one i need to go maybe go back to and yeah out again for sure for sure. All right. All right. We're at Vinny's Uno, one, number Uno. one. Yep. All there right. It is. I knew this one. <laughs> I'm I don't know if I've ever talked to him about this. So Vinny's number one is Assassin's Creed three. Yes, it is. Which I will admit that's the first Assassin's Creed I ever played. Yeah. Oh, okay. I fucking hate that game <laughs> with a passion. <laughs> That turned me off. There's another. Assassin's there's Creed. another guy I know that feels the same way you do, Justin. But I, I, I will to really say like I it. can. I can understand why Vinny likes it. I mean, it, it is. It does play well. It's. It's. I remember. I was so excited though, being a history major and a history teacher. I was like, yeah. this is so cool. You know, video games and my career are gonna mold yep. together. And I remember playing it in the beginning was so slow. And then I remember like there was one mission where you had to ride along with Paul Revere and it yeah. kept bugging out and he wouldn't shut the hell up. And I'm that like, that was a buggy mission. I'm like. <laughs> Fuck, I'm done. And I took it out of the box. I took it out of the the, the uh, console, put it in the box, and drove to GameStop. I'm like, here, give me money Dude, for this game. I don't want back. it. Anymore. I don't want it. <laughs> but um, but no, I, I can definitely see like where it kind of expanded the franchise. It grew it out a little bit more. So if, if somebody who was really into Assassin's Creed, I can definitely see why Vinny likes it so much. Um, and then also yeah. having the American Revolution stuff is pretty cool. So right, I think I def I definitely think the setting is a huge part of it. I think that's the most relatable setting, at least for yeah. you know us. For us, yeah. Um, it, I think it did start a new engine too. It did play a little bit different than the previous ones. Um, did have its bugs. Did have some of its, you know, strategic style missions and everything. Like I said, introduced the naval warfare. Yes. Uh, albeit real brief, they were almost like just brief side missions. Um, tied in pretty well with Assassin's Creed. Uh, it, it tied in well with the Assassin's Creed story, more specifically Rogue, mm-hmm. um, which is definitely an underrated game. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, it it. I I definitely enjoyed it when it first came out. It did move a little slow for me. I did think some of the the later ones were were better. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I I know Vinny definitely loves this one. He though, loves so that game. That I'll have to talk to him about that. Number number one. So well, good. Uh, pick. Well, but one, yeah, one I haven't one I haven't gone back and revisited though. So no, I mean no, I I have um, not because I got rid of the game. I do not have it anymore. Right. So if you look at Assassin's Creed Black flag you're actually playing as that character's grandfather yes that's Black right flag. callaway so, right kenway kenway so there's actually yeah there's actually uh um uh, like a bloodline thing right there so it, it's good it's good with continuity and everything and it's uh it did have a lot of good dlc too and mm-hmm. they had george washington everyone loves george washington yeah. or did wasn't there a dlc like an alternate universe kind of dlc yeah. where he became like a tyrant he king. became a king yeah to take yeah, him yeah, down yeah. or something yeah exactly that's kind of neat very good justin there you go <laughs> there you all go all right all right my number one your number one here all it right. is this oh, one as soon as we said we were going to do this topic i knew with a bullet this was my number one um the amount of time <laughs> playing this game uh the amount of parties in college and after college that we had Oh, look at you, friends. party boy. <laughs> well, I'll wait until you hear what type of party it was. Uh, that well, we there's had. a video game involved. So. Yes. <laughs> the amount of parties we had where, like, for a while, it, when I was still in college and my friends that were out of college, Melissa and Mark and, and Nick and a few of them, it was pretty much just like a given, like, all right, it's the weekend. We're all going to get together and just play this game. Um, and, and not that I would call myself a musician, but being somewhat of a somewhat <laughs> musician and playing the drums. This gave me an excuse to still play the drums because I didn't have room for my drum set. And it was too loud. 
I that is Rock Band Two. Oh my! <laughs> I that's amazing. every so often I get this urge to set everything up. I set the drums back up. I still got them. I have you the still Beatles. have you still have all the I have uh, the Beatles equipment. drums because my original okay. drum set I broke because I was playing them so much. Um, <laughs> the amount of money I spent on DLC songs for this game, uh, and not even so much with my friends, but like Christmas, Thanksgiving. Um, birthday family parties. Yeah. My Any aunts sort of and event. uncles and my little cousins would come over and they'd be like, hey, what new songs we want to play rock band? Like it was a family affair. Like my mom would start pl- singing like Ballroom Blitz. And, <laughs> you know, my, I remember that we have video of my little cousin who she's she's graduating from uh, from Iowa or she graduated from Iowa or is graduating this year. We have video of her singing Drop It Like It's Hot. And she was like eight <laughs> when she played this. So um, oh, that's amazing. that game means so much to me obviously being such a big music guy and you know playing yeah. multiple instruments and the drums are my favorite um the fact that a game could make a fake drum set and i, I swear to god obviously you already know how to play the drums if you gave yourself enough time you would start to pick up how to play the drums using that okay, controller just because a of a little the bit. bass drum okay. and the the four tom toms and the snare yeah. and then obviously I got really nerdy. I bought the high the cymbal extension so you didn't always have to keep <laughs> playing on the drums. Right. Um yeah I I'm so I didn't know there was a symbol extension. Yeah, well, for, for the wow. really into it people. Um, the, <laughs> the thing that bumps me out, though, is like a lot of the DLC I bought, my account for Xbox 360 is locked because I was a moron and I used my St. Xavier University email address, which has been sh- long since deleted and shut down. Oh, I, can't no. rec- I can't recover that account and I can't get the DLC back. Oh, um, so no. <laughs> I'm stuck playing just a handful of songs from the discs. So <laughs> I'm so bummed. I should. <sighs> I don't know why I did that. But anyway, like you'll see. <laughs> every time we would have like a family party, it's like All right, I'm gonna go pick up a twenty dollar X point Xbox points card to buy yeah. new songs. And there was so much good music on that system. So oh yeah, they had tons. That is my tons. number one. Um, God, I love Rock Band. It's such rock a good game. Band rock Band Two, in particular, Rock That's Band amazing. Two. Rock Band Two. That's yeah. amazing. I've got a couple Rock Band games. I I do have Rock Band Two. One. Well, it was so I've great because got... it's like, hey, you yeah. you don't want to have to keep. You want to just transfer over all the old Rock Band One music. Yeah, pay us yeah. five bucks and you can upload all of it to the new system. It's like okay. And then I had Rock Band Three. That broke in the move because I left it in the console when I boxed up the console and oh. I didn't take it out and that disc oh. broke. So. Um, oh geez but rock band 2 is definitely still my favorite just the way it was set up it was yeah set up a little bit better so i've um i think i might have i because i have some rock bands i have some guitar heroes i still forget which ones are which that first guitar Uh, hero was amazing too i liked i liked the rock band equipment better yes i did too. like that that uh guitar hero guitar made too much noise yes it did you know with the when you're strumming you're yep it would rattle yeah. the rock band one was so smooth takes so. you out of the zone a little bit it, you know? exactly lost my lost my rhythm a little bit yeah um, i also have green day rock band <laughs> that's the one i want and never yeah. got from the radio yeah was kind of bummed, that was but... <laughs> well you can yeah. come over i'll bring it over next time we can all right play, sounds so. good sounds good <laughs> since, you, since you have all the equipment still, i still have so. it still have it so all, all right. right number one can Ready? i guess I, yeah you can guess i'm gonna say call of duty modern warfare Ooh, you modern warfare be... 2 Black Ops. So, we, so here now we I'm go. just rambling. Ghosts. It's, I don't know. <laughs> here's okay. So what what did you say first, Justin? I initially said Modern Warfare One. Modern Warfare One. So definitely an honorable mention right okay. there. So you're close. Okay. What else did you guess? Black Ops. Black Ops. Definitely an honorable mention. Could have made the list right there. Okay. So not none the number one though. Um, Modern Warfare Two. Modern Warfare Two. On the honorable mention list, okay. but not the number one. And I have no idea. So those were some of my honorable mentions, obviously. My number one, believe it or not, is... Wow, Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> oh, I was maybe going it Call is. of Duty. There you maybe, go. It is, maybe it is no surprise, but yeah. Red Dead Redemption, yeah. Is it is it too far to say that there are video games out there that just change your life? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, it's like somebody seeing a movie. Yeah, I mean, right. it's not it's not like you're playing Pac-Man anymore. They are cinematic right. experiences. So Re- revolutionary for me. I mean, this game is not not what I expected. It just blew me away completely. With I, there was something I. I played this old game called Gun. You remember that? Oh yeah, game? I remember Gun. Yeah, it was kind I of like an played, old West. It. Yeah, an old West game sort of thing. It was a lot of fun, actually. Underrated. Didn't get a lot of attention. But I was like, I need a game like that. Only like 
you know, bigger, bolder, grander. And that's exactly what Red Dead Redemption is right now. And that that turns it up to the max. I mean, it takes that great story writing, storytelling, and open world games from uh from Rockstar and gives it that Grand Theft Auto twist in the old West. And it just yeah, it just it just takes it and runs with it. So um yeah, it like I said, <laughs> didn't know what to expect when I first bought it, bought it on a whim. I'm like, I'm gonna give it a try and never look back. And uh yeah, I've had play played this game a ton. It's just, it's a good just like fuck around game too. If you don't want to do the story, if you don't want to save anything, just go around, lasso, shoot a bunch of people mm-hmm. and you know, you're you'll you'll have a good time if you're just trying to kill a little bit of time. Back when I had time to kill, rather, yeah. So. Oh, those were the days. Um, and then when Red Dead Redemption Two came out, I think it was the last game game I stood in line for for a midnight release. So, um, yeah, that that series means a lot. It's arguably my favorite, definitely one of my favorites. And I think it really kind of, I think it really kind of captured the gaming world. Um, by the very fact that it was one of the most anticipated sequels with Red Dead Redemption 2. Undead Nightmare was a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't know if I ever beat that, but no, uh, I got tired of having to go back and in like yeah, because un, when they take over un, the town, take right. over the towns, yeah. right? They, yeah, you had to go do that, and you're like, oh, well, hell, I'm all the way across the map. So, I mean, it wasn't the biggest map either, but it was no. very, it was very fulfilling. You know, there was a lot, there was a lot involved with it, and one of the one of the prettier. Uh, well lit maps that you'll see. I mean, just the locations, uh, the uh, the desert that you're in. I mean, you know, they made you know a desert interesting and engaging and all that. So plenty to do, missions, hunting, bounties, whatever else there was. I mean, just kind of being a cowboy there in the old west, uh, and it's just kind of your sandbox to play in. So for sure, Red Dead Red Dead Redemption. When we first came up with this idea, it was. It just clicked right away. Yeah, like, not with a heartbeat. One. Has to be. So that is my, <coughs> excuse me, number one. Very nice. Very nice. Um, <sighs> we have some listener submissions here, yeah, Justin. Lot, yeah. Should we should we should we burn through some of these really quick? Yeah, let's burn through them. I'm gonna go, Zach, our guy, Fallout New Vegas, great game, rage, awesome, Bioshock, Singularity, Far Cry 2. Far Cry 2, underrated, real good game. So there we go. Uh, Trent in no order Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 I played Super Mario Galaxy 1 uh, on that new re-release that they did for Switch that's a really good game that yep. would be on my honorable mention Ratchet and Clank a future of Kraken Time also on my honorable mention list uh, Fire Emblem Awakening the Mass Effect Trilogy and Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition Resident Evil 4 is one that I could never get into it's the one Resident Evil I never got into okay. which is arguably a lot of people say is the best um, yeah a lot of people do yeah. uh, Dr. Mantis Toboggan number 5 Grand Theft Auto 4 Number four, Red Dead Redemption. Number three, Halo 3. Number two, Super Smash Brothers Brawl. And number one, Mass Effect 2. There you go, Justin. Mm-hmm. I will mention Gears of War and Borderlands 2. Very nice. All right. Pretzel Vince writes in, never played PS3, but did have a Wii. Favorite games were Tiger Woods Golfing. And there was an air combat game where you start flying a plane in World War One and proceed through the game flying in different wars. Vinny uh, tells us it was called Blazing Angels. So there you go. Oh yeah, I remember Blazing Angels. I do not I remember Blaz- that. I have Blazing Angels one and two for Xbox. Oh wow! So okay, Vince can come play that next time he's over. So there you go. Justin B writes in Dead Nation. Why am I not remembering Dead Nation? If it's the one I think of, it's kind of like a top-down isometric. Um, yeah, I think. Okay, I think I remember it being one of the PS Plus games when PS4 started. Okay. But yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so there's Dead Nation, Lords of Shadow. Mm-hmm. Is it Blaz Blue? Blaze Blue. It's Blaze a fighting Blue. game. Yep, it's a fighting game. Okay, Infamous Two. That Infamous was Seven. That was Generation Seven. Yes. Oh, it was a PS3 game. Uh, yeah, Inf- yes, Infamous yes, yes. One was good. Infamous Two, I thought, was much better. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's a good I game. Like, I uh, can't think of definitive definitive fifth, so I'll just use uh, Shank. Shank. Sorry, I, I was like, is that Shank as a placeholder for now? Okay, there you go. Nice list. Uh, yes, Jeff wrote in said Metal Gear Solid Five. Um, I wonder if it's five or four. Five, four, four's got it's got to be okay. Four. I was gonna say because four, four, yeah. four, uh, four was on my honorable mentions too. Yeah, definitely uh, probably one of the weaker Metal Gear Solids, but story wise, it's probably one of the best. It's just batshit uh-huh. insane. The Darkness, Alan Wake, the first Tomb Raider reboot, and Red, Dem- Red Dead Redemption. Good list, Jeff. Awesome. 
Kevin writes in Dark Souls, Red Dead, <coughs> excuse me, Red Dead Redemption, Halo Reach had that one. Battlefield Bad Company 2. Hell yes. Yeah, great game. Great game. Great game. And Metal, Metal Gear Solid 4. All right. Uh, Seth said The Last of Us, which I think you bought me for either my birthday or was it a wedding present? I was birthday? one of them. Yeah. I remember you brought it out. O- you brought it over the night before my wedding. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> like, it's like, a really good game. But man, is that a dark game? Holy yeah, cow. Oh, I, I did game. not. Holy I did not play the game. sequel because I some of the stuff I read. I'm like, yeah, I heard man. it was even like darker. Like than, you need a bath that. afterwards. Yeah, ex- exactly. But good game. Nonetheless, uh, Bioshock Infinite Oblivion Fallout 3. Fallout 3 is also on my honorable yeah, mentions Fallout list. Fallout 3. That is another one. I did almost everything there was to do. Yep. Uh, Mass Effect 2. Not in any order. All right. Very good. Thank you, Seth. Mark writes in Resistance, Fall of Man. Good old Resistance. I never played any of those. Did you play any of those? I played Resistance 3 a little bit, which I think was, was a PS- PS3 launch title, I believe it was. So okay. pick that one up. Uh, John writes in favorite games from the PS3 generation. Number one is definitely Last of Us. The other four, No Order, Skyrim, Bioshock, Red Dead Redemption, and Mass Effect 2. It's kind of cool to see so many of the same ones pop up that exactly. everyone's kind of on the same page. Uh, Last mention, of Us, there you Last go. Last of Us, there we go. Uh, Cat Trails of Cold Steel 2, Tales of Exilia, Zilia 2, The Last of Us, Skyrim. Uh, what is this one, Justin? Naruto. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm, Ninja Storm 3. There okay. You go. Didn't play, uh, didn't really play any of those. No, neither. No, I can't. A little say bit I of did. Skyrim. A little bit of Skyrim. I beat yeah. Skyrim, but yeah. Uh, Aaron writes in Dead Island, MGS4, Island. Shadows nice. of the Damned, Skyrim, and Castle Crashers. Aaron, All right. thank you. Good list. Steven writes in MGS4, Skyrim, Gears of War 2. Honorable mention right there. Great, 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 great game. Assassin's Creed 2 almost made my top five list. Almost actually took the place of uh, Black Flag. I couldn't decide which one. I ultimately gave it to Black Flag, but Assassin's Creed 2, one of my favorites. So there you go. Was that Metal Gear Solid? That was Metal Gear Solid. I forgot I had Metal Gear Solid 4 over here. Yeah. Um, And then Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Very good. All right. Seth writes in The Last of Us Dark Souls Journey. Super Mario Galaxy and God of War 3. First God of War mentioned. Yeah, first God of War. How there about you go. that? Dean writes in Ninja Garden 2, Oblivion, Burnout Paradise, Borderlands 2, Mass Effect 2. You've played a couple of those. I have. I, you know what? I, Borderlands 2 wasn't bad either. I, okay. I enjoyed a little bit of that. Jesse wrote in Resistance 2, Metal Gear Solid 4, Resistance Fall Man, Wii Sports Resorts. There's the Wii Sports. Well, there not Wii is. Sports, but Wii Sports Resorts. I remember and Transformers that Fall of Cybertron, which I remember hearing really good things about that game too. Really? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Casey writes in Dark Souls, Mass Effect 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Really good game. Metal yep. Gear Solid 4, Borderlands 2. A lot of MGS. A lot of MGS popping up. Sergio wrote in Grand Theft Auto 4, Uncharted 2, God of War 3, Red Dead Redemption, and Saints Row the Third. Saints Row the Third is a phenomenal Row. game. That's also <laughs> on my honorable mentions. There Break you it. go. Great game. Nice. Uh, a fellow Greg writes in Mortal Kombat 9, Resistance Fall of Man. Mass Effect 2. Very nice, Justin. Uh, Metal Gear Rising. Really? Did yes. you hear great things about that? Or did you play that one? No, I, have I did that not. One. I never played did it. did not play that one. Black Ops 2. Good call. So, yeah, Black but, um, Ops 1 guy, personally. Mortal but. Kombat, definitely on my honorable mentions. I don't get into yeah. a lot of fighting games, but holy cow, this is a great Mortal Kombat to uh, like a thing great, of its Great own, story so. mode. Totally awesome story mode. A lot of content. Good stuff. <laughs> Uh, Michael wrote in Portal. I have, uh, where is it at? Portal. Portal Yes. Portal 2, definitely on my honorable mentions. Great game. One of those ones that really, you feel so smart when you finish one of the levels, which (laughs) not many games can make you feel smart. So I like that. Uh, He also said Street Fighter 4, Fight Night Champion, Mortal Kombat 9, and Dragon's Dogma. Very cool. Good list. And to close it out, Emmanuel writes in Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2, Ratchet and Clank, A Crack in Time, Infamous 1 and 2, Red Dead Redemption, and Justin's Mass Effect 2. There you go. Any more honorable mentions to go over, I Justin? do. Hold on. Hold on. Let's here. see him. All right. Uh, first How many one, do I'm, you have? Uh, one, two, three, four. I have like seven or eight left. All right. Well, I'm going to go first because right, I only ahead. have three left. So <laughs> I'll burn through my way. You've got the whole list right there. All so. Right. Arkham Asylum. Asylum. There it is for you, Justin. Then a couple of def. Then a couple of baseball games right here. 
baseball game that changed, you know, the way I felt about 2K Sports right there. MLB oh, 2K. Hold on, 7. hold on. I got it right there. Oh, that was look at that. Too. 2K Great 7 game. buddies right there. Great awesome. game. Not a Derek, we're not a Derek Jeter pod, but it was no. a game. So last one, I gotta throw the show in there. MLB 12, the show definitely was a step up graphically for me. It also, I think this is the game. You remember the commercial um where the where the where you think like they're pretending the Cubs won the World Series. Oh my god, that commercial and broke then, my heart every and time then I saw it. It turns out to be the guy it's playing, him. right? Playing in his apartment with yep. the L, you know, yeah. speaking by and the tagline is so real, it's unreal. Yes. So, that was such a great I right. I the amount of times I watched that commercial right on YouTube. He had like the tear dripping down his, his yeah. face. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, when they won, that's kind of what it looked like outside afterwards. Right. It's kind of yep. cool. So pretty much did. So all right, cool. all more, right, Justin. I, let's like see. I said, Portal, Mortal Kombat, Metal Gear Solid, Fallout Three, all honorable mentions. Ratchet and Clank, A Crack in Time, which I don't know what I did. It must have fallen off the bar here. Um, <laughs> it's this was one somewhere. I played a ton of. Mod Nation Racers. Do you remember Mod oh, Nation Racers? No, I do not. This was a great Mario Kart alternative because you could create your own tracks and create your own drivers. So it was oh, endless. Yeah. It was awesome. Um, I wish they'd make a sequel, but they never did. Uh, great game. It was I would such to pick a good that game. one up. You have to send me. What, what's it called game. again? Mod Nation Racers. Mod Nation Racers. That sounds like a lot of fun. I got to check it was. That out. It was. Um, Call of Duty one. Black Ops. My favorite Call of Duty. Yes, Probably it besides is. this and World War II. Those are my two yes, favorites. It is. Yep. <laughs> um, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Great when game. They brought it back because I loved yep. the original Hot Pursuit. In Heck yeah. 1997, 98. And then when they, <laughs> when they brought right. this back. This is the second time they brought it back because they also made one on PS2. Um, That's was right. Was that too. Hot Pursuit? That wasn't two. Hot Pursuit. That was Hot Pursuit. Two. That was Hot Pursuit. Two. Okay. Yeah. And then they that was just said Hot game. Pursuit. Yeah. So this is great. I still that love is this a great game. game. Yep. Uh, another ra- you're, you're Need for Speed guy typically too. So. Yeah. Yeah. So another, hey, you used to be. I've been on a big racing kick lately. Uh, Dirt yes, Three. I, that's a great racing game. Dirt Three. Good. Love Dirt good Three. Call. Rally cross. Oh, here's crack in time. Great game. Oh, there it is. Uh, this is the ex- the this is the expansion pack. This isn't the right one I grabbed, but Dragon Age Origins. Dragon, I was like, is that Dragon Age? Look I loved that game. Uh, fun facts. Um, I asked Erica to buy that for me the first Christmas we were together in 2009. Oh, <laughs> and she bought it. And before I opened it, she goes, you know, I don't think this is the right thing. And so I opened it and I said, no, this is great. This game's all oh, it's supposed to be incredible. And she goes, Oh, I was at the store and I'm looking at it and it's got elves and dwarves. And I'm like, he doesn't <laughs> want any of this. And I go, no, I love that. I love this game. Oh, like, oh, oh, sh- she okay. thought she knew. Yep. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. See, now, now you're in. You're in. Now I'm letting now all the dirty in. stuff yeah. come out. And then lastly, uh, NHL 07. Heck yeah. Not the best hockey game. But the fact that it totally changed. It was the first 360 hockey game. Yes. Um change the controls you were going to use the right stick to do all your moves on yes. your on the hockey stick yep. the amount of online time i put into this game was way too much so <laughs> that is my honorable mentions i'm done look at that it's always a good chat when it comes it to video games, video games we, can bring yeah. them, we can bring them to the table right here we can, yeah for sure this this list was difficult um but there are no there are no bad games that were mentioned here tonight <laughs> I tell you, um, if we did a if we do a PS2 one, two, one but, eventually, yeah. that's going to be really tough. I think that will be. I think that will be. So even though I got a couple uh, of PS2, actually, I think I already my, probably I think, got like three I've got, or four I think I've got in. three, three locked for sure. Yeah, I think so. I do too. We'll we'll uh, we'll yeah, we save might the front of the day. Week. We will. We will for sure. Well, there you go. That is what that is. Whatever. I hope everyone enjoyed their video game chat. So, yes. So uh, thanks again for staying tuned. We'll be back next week. Hopefully we'll get Vinny back. Hopefully I won't be sick. So I will be able to offer more. Uh, remember, you can find us on all your podcast networks. Email us at baseball, whatever at gmail.com or our official network email, baseball and whatever podcast at belly you can find us on your Roku app, uh, the Belly of Sports app. You can watch our show on Sunday afternoons. Uh, it's an hour segment. Um, you can also find us on Facebook.com slash baseball, and whatever. Tweet us at baseball and what. Find us on YouTube. Search baseball, and whatever. Subscribe, like, share. Uh, the text line 1-913-808-3278. That number again is 1-913-808-BART. <laughs> dynamite drop in uh greg and then lastly <laughs> don't forget to check out our friends at in the check out their apparel it's really cool use promo code baseball and what all one word to get 10 percent off your order how great is that that's, that's so it. great 
I am going to quickly edit and put this up, and then I am going to crash and go to bed before I wake up and have to go to work sick tomorrow. So, <laughs> Greg, you got any final parting words? I hope you had a good, get a good night's rest, Justin. Thank you. you. Did. Had a lot of fun doing video games with I you, should as have, always. I should have grabbed like two handfuls of Halls because I only grabbed one, and I've been out of lozengers now for like Uh-oh. an hour. So I'm ready to run upstairs and grab some. But anyway, go, on that note. Go hit the Halls. I will hit the Halls. <laughs> Sounds like... Never mind. All right. uh, We will see you next week for more tomfoolery and fun on baseball and whatever. Take care, everybody. Goodbye, everyone.